Hello everyone and welcome to the grand finals of EGF H for 2019 for Rocket League. Today we have a best of seven match between the Sheehan Titans playing against the Ludlow Falcons. And I of course want to thank our wonderful sponsors, the Yukon School of Engineering and the Yukon Gaming Club for help making this season possible. My name is Navik and today I'm buying by Squid. Hello, Navik. Good day for some Rocket League. I'm excited to get into these uh, matches. Best of seven, as you mentioned, between the top two teams that we've had in EGFH this season. Going head-to-head. -head. I'm getting ready for this game. I'm excited, and I hope you are too. Let's get right into this. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to this. Like you said, this has been... We've got the Ludlow Falcons in the blue, Chihan Titans in the orange, and we're going to kick it off already. Zout Azarius here. Good tap. Looking for a setup. A Domolition. Demolition already coming out, Squid. On to Zout Azarius from Janify. Four. Zarius getting a nice bounce into the corner there. Seb set up. Mixer looking to intercept. We see a bit of a whiff coming out from Bot, but a good tap from Seb. May find the first goal. Is that Azarius with the save? Mixo, once again, looking to clear some ground for his team, but Janify on top of the ball. There is a bit of a dunk coming on. The contest, the challenge comes out. Bob finds it. A good pass towards Bob there. Back into the corner. Rotations coming out, and again, there is a lot of pressure coming out from Ludlow Falcons at the moment onto the side of the Sheehan Titans. Yeah, they've already pulled out three shots, and all three of them have had quality. Had to make defensive save there, but they did get it out to the midfield one. You can tell that their offense is definitely their number one presence. Great pass out in the mid. Seb finishes it off, taken from Zanif or Janify. Yeah, I mean, like you just nailed it there. Janify, that was a good tap. Seb followed it up. We see Wolf Python just not reacting fast enough. And like you said, goal number one, 55 seconds into the round. Again, coming into this kickoff here, the ball clears up towards the Sheehan Titans side. A contest coming out, Wall Python manages to come out on top. Does get stolen away from Janify. Mixo is going to be into the goal, making sure that that doesn't go in. Another demolition coming out there. Once again, Janify onto Wall Python. Seb stealing it away to Janify. Janify back to Seb, recentering it. Mixo looking for the aerial, did get the tap. Wall Python following it up. Now, you do see the Titans, one goal behind, so a bit, a bit of pressure coming out from them. This is, of course, ladies and gentlemen, a best of seven. So a drop in the first game isn't horrible. There's definitely still time for them, though. You can see that offensive opportunity definitely wasn't, you know, the best that we've seen in a while. But that can really be attributed to the initial demo at the midfield line we saw. The Falcons tried to slow down that offense, and they did so rather effectively. But overall, the offense did still come, so there's life here for this orange team. There is life in D as we see it. Oh, okay, we saw a good attempt there. Bot managing to win that contest. Gets a really good bounce, but doesn't have the boost to follow it up. Janify tried to, but didn't have the forward momentum here. Once again, we're going to see the Falcons trying to reset it up. As out as with a decent tap, but Janify being able to steal it away again. A lot of back and forth. We need to see a big clear coming out from the Titans. This might be their opportunity. Bot slowing it down again. Both, okay. Seb and Janify going for that. Bit of an interesting look at a pinch. Perhaps, but either way... A large boost commit for that one challenge, and it didn't really gain them that much ground either, just past the half here. And you can tell that the Titans are just looking for an opportunity to get out into the opposing half. It looks like they've had some really good opportunities, they just haven't been able to capitalize quite yet. Double commit in their own half, might slow things down, and the Falcons try to close the gap here. Yeah, and... Titans now with some momentum. We do see them putting on that forward aggression. This could be a really good bounce for them as it is set up nicely, but it looks like they're going to fall back, get onto that defensive rotation, make sure they don't get another goal scored onto them. And that might have been the right call as that was a risk of flying through the air slightly too high. Now, Bop with the tap. Again, now the momentum in the Falcons' side. The contest comes out once again, keeping it in the corner here. We, the Falcons trying to not give them any space. Seb, though, playing defensively, waiting to look for those clears. Manages to get it past out of his areas, but Wall Python gets a good tap. Centers it. It is going to be saved, however, from by a Janify. And I have to say right now, this second half has not been very good for the Falcons. And honestly, more than just the second half, it's been after the first minute. 
This game has not been theirs. Even though they have this one goal lead, you can tell that they are not playing the aggressive style that they opened up with. Four shots is what they have right now, which is actually what they ended with after their first goal. So they have not been able to push into the offensive end at all. It's been a complete download for Sheehan. Shot on target here. Jana is in front of it, and they will get it away. With one minute remaining, the Titans continue to try and close this one goal gap. Yeah, and I think I think you really kind of nailed it there by mentioning that, yeah, there's only been one goal, and now it looks dead even. Both teams playing defensively, offensively. Oh, and that was so close. Slightly off of target there for Seb. Good opportunity, though, as they recenter it off the backboard. We see Bob flying in. Hits it too high. Again, the third tap is not going to go in as War Python manages to save it. Good patience on that one as well. Great to the backboard by the Falcons. Unfortunately for them, they just couldn't quite get it in. But with only 30 seconds remaining, they've got to hold on to just this one goal. And it looks like they're going to do so effectively. Well done on that offense to get their momentum back up. And the Titans respond to this. The Titans now have 10 seconds left onto the clock. They're on the offense. It's a good pass play, but Wolf Python just wasn't ready for it. Coming at him a bit too quickly. This looks like it is going to be Falcons in game one, unless we can see one of those last second shots. Mixer with an opportunity. Goes to Salazarius. Salazarius gets the tap. It's going to rebound off, and it led to touch the ground, unfortunately, for the Titans. Congratulations, Falcons, taking game one. And that was just a tough read off the corner. It could have gone a lot of different ways. So if you're landing right underneath of where that ball could rebound in about, you know, three different spots, you just kind of have to guess at it. And he almost got it up onto the corner wall. Could have been a scoring opportunity for the Titans. But I have to commend them for their second half effort. It was so much more there. This was a lot more of their game in that second half. They started to pick up momentum throughout the entire game. And I'm excited to see them come at us with full momentum here in match number two. But the Falcons do have that one game advantage. They only need to win three more at this rate. The Titans, like I said, plenty of time to respond and plenty of ability to do so. Let's see if they can manage it. Yeah, and we are just waiting for the teams to be ready as we get into the next game. And like you said, I'm excited to see how we see these teams start to warm up, right? It's the first game of the day. Uh, I believe all of the teams have traveled out to Yukon as well. So there's, you know, there's some nerves coming out. You're in a LAN environment, but we are going to be getting into game two, ladies and gentlemen. One up for the Ludlow Falcons. Coming into the kickoff here. It does start off in the side of the Falcons. A victorious kickoff coming out for the Titans. Seb, though, stealing it away. It's going to come down to Wolfpython. Gets it past Wolfpython. Zalta's area is going into the air. Passing it to Mixo. Mixo gets challenged by Bop, and Bop manages to get the touch. Danify now passing it, rebounding it back to himself. It looked like he was going to go to the set pass, but actually decided, you know, just shoot for that corner, rebound it, try and get a fake out. That was Arius here with a good opportunity, though, is not away. Again, a lot of back and forth at the moment. The pressure, though, is on definitely on the side of the Titans. They're managing to keep ball control and doing work. And we have seen a couple of good ideas from them as well. Attempted passing plays, mostly broken up by the Falcons' defense. But the thought is still there. You can tell that they're trying to look for the tools that they have and all of the options for their downfield presence. A nice challenge there by Mixo, and it will get into the blue half. This is where we've seen most of this game take place. We'll finally see if the Titans can pull off a goal here, <clears throat> starting in game number two. Yeah, and it's looking good for them at the moment. They're putting on so much pressure. All they need to keep is this offense on and be ready to make that defensive rotation. Bop has no boost, so he can't continue on this attempt to contest his opposition. Janify, good tap here, centers it. This is a golden opportunity as Zaltazarius manages to save it. Good backup way to be there on the goal line, just in case the backboard defense failed, which it did in that situation, but they're still on the defensive side here. And surprisingly enough, the first shot did go to the Falcons with that play opportunity. Over a minute and a half gone here. Still no goal scored, however. Yeah, no, and I think it might have been a bit of a fluke when we saw the Falcons score so early last time around because these two teams at the moment are completely dead even. The defense is coming out off of the backboard here for the Falcons, but Zalazari should be able to find the clear. Does get it past a Bob Sepp with an opportunity to shot, but it gets contested and just completely kills the momentum of the ball. And yet, progress continues down the field. No great 50-50. Oh my goodness, I thought that was going to go in for a second. Mixo for the follow-up gets the dunk around, and Bob can't make the touch. It drops in. Mixo earns the first goal for the Titans. 
Yeah, the waterfall coming out there really set the Titans up into a good position. Janifo with a save and Bop just slightly misreading where the ball was going to go. And that is going to, like you said, give the Titans that lead. So we need to be seeing the Falcons putting on some pressure because right now Titans have had ball control. It really does seem like the Falcons, one big strength was in their offensive prowess in the last game. And you're right, they just haven't had much of it at all this game. It's two shots to two presently and i think the titans have had more control and having that boost control and passing ability is gonna be what gives them the advantage here yeah and i think that's something that's slightly overlooked a lot when it comes to rocket league especially on the lower leagues and things is map control and boost control is i'd argue just as important as ball control in a lot of situations because if you can deny your opponents a lot of movement and mobility then you're gonna just limit their options and at the moment this is exactly what we're seeing as the Falcons are just running low on boost pretty much everywhere. And up here, Seb looking to get the rebound back to his teammate, but Zalazarius is going to intercept it. There's another shot opportunity. Ball clears it straight past their goal. Nice and safe for the Falcons as the momentum swings straight back to the Titans. You really can't blame. I think it was Seb. Trying to get that ball across his own net. A bit of an unexpected play at that. If you're on the Titans offense and a missed passing opportunity there. Swing it out on the right-hand side for the Orange team. 90 seconds all that the Titans have to hold on now. To move into game three with a tied series. And we got to see something happen for the Falcons here. A whiff touch there on the side is going to be a massive time and boost loss. As the Titans will now push it into the opposing half. 75 seconds. What do you got to do if you're the Falcons? Only three shots on target and none of them have really been high quality. Yeah, I think even the Falcons at the moment, you need to start playing more aggressively, even if that's just getting a few aggressive bumps in, right? And kind of denying their movement and positioning because that's going to be two up for the Titans. And I think we're going to see this tier series get tied up. Yeah, Janify here on the back wall just didn't have any options and said wanted to help out. But when you commit two players to that ball, somebody has got to make the touch. Third man just not quite there in time. That's what's going to happen. You're going to get punished every single time for that one. And now they've got just under a minute to make a miracle happen here. But the Titans have been doing a much better job. And this is what I was talking about at the end of game number one. They had all of the opportunity to really take the reins on this one. And barely missing out on that extra little bit of a goal. But now the goal differential sways in their favor for the entirety of this series. Oh, not quite anymore. Bob's just going to have one sneak through past the defender. Yeah, that was, that was a nice clean shot coming up from Bob. It just got it in. He saw the double commit coming out from Zazarius. And they just couldn't find it. Him and Warpython both went for it. And it just managed to thread the needle. Definitely some great placement in the top corner as well. Commendable effort on that front. And now, coming into the kickoff. Mixo looking to a retort. There's an attempt there. Seb does manage to get it. Once again, recentering it. Bop with the clear. Danify. Is this another opportunity? Can we see the Falcons clear this out, close it, tie it up to two? Well, it's looking like a no at the moment as we saw a massive clear coming up from Zalazarius once again. Mixo, Wallpython, Wallpython looking to get it into that waterfall position. It's a good opportunity and that's going to be goal number three. And somebody on the defensive side absolutely has to have the read on this ball. And it looks like just neither of them had the boost to deal with it. You can see Janify and Bop. Both playing into a deferential position. Maybe it was just a rotational communication error. Either way, that ball's going to go in once again. Pretty much every time if you have nobody up there on the line contesting it. And it gives the Titans that insurance that they need. And oh my goodness, a missed chance there. It would have taken a kickoff goal. But I'm sure the Falcons rather would have had that one. The clock will hit zero. And game number two goes to the Titans. We now move on to what is essentially a best of five for the finals here. Yeah, and so far, these have been very, very close games. Of course, we saw the Titans pulling away their squid, but that first game was, uh, and even for most of that game, it was looking pretty dead even. It certainly was, and I, I think, you know, we mentioned that the Falcons needed to provide a uh, decent offensive effort at the end of this game in order to have a chance, and they certainly delivered. I think that was a wonderful you know, uh, push forward that they tried to make there at the end, especially when it was tied up, or sorry, what was uh wasn't tied but when they were trailing one goal to two it felt like when they pushed onto the offense there was a very real and present threat there it felt like they still had enough presence of mind to realize that they were a part of that game regardless of the fact that they had been down by two in the final minute so now can the falcons 
use the, the benefit of that mentality advantage was what it seemed like and try and push forward into a, a uh, advantage here in this best of seven or will the titans continue with their momentum let's find out yeah i definitely think that we i mean both teams here were gonna be hungering for getting that advantage in the set and once again this start seems to be pretty oppressive coming out from the titans this is an opportunity for mixer but he gets challenged by seb and seb gets the huge clear here this is an opportunity coming out from the falcons it's looking really good for them as it once again it just manages to slip away from them but these contests these challenges are working out from them left right and center and the falcons are starting to spread their wings a little bit yeah definitely a quick shutdown on the offense you noted that the titans tried to get set up incredibly quick off the face off but it's all about the falcons now seb receiving an infield pass from bop this is beautiful yeah, no, that pass from Bop, like you said, straight to Seb. Seb saw the opportunity, committed for it. Nice little, just pop it up into the corner, nice and clean. And we're only 4 minutes 17 left onto the clock, so we're not even a minute in. And uh, I believe that might be in the fastest goal of the series. Maybe indeed, but... Oh, this is a bad situation to be in. Mixel almost makes the save, but that's just what's going to happen. 10 seconds of in-game time. Pass and it's already the second goal. Salta's there. You, you gotta find a way to dump that ball. And you know, looking at that possession, I'm not sure if I blame him. That's a very difficult spot to be in. You can't flick it easily. No, that was that was a split second decision there that decided if they scored or saved. And like you said, it's not an easy one. But Seb again is looking to go in for the kill as Janify gets the rebound. Looking to make it happen, Bob. Again, now setting it back up. We're not going to see any more rotations coming down from the Falcons. It's the Titans. It's finally getting some momentum. Two goals down, just a minute uh, used within the clock as well. So there's still plenty of time left in that to this round. Certainly is, but they shouldn't let that get to them. You'd rather be down 2 0 with uh, three and a half minutes left than about one minute, which is, uh, hey, whatever we saw. Their opponents last time. Here's a passing opportunity. Wall Python up high. Zalta trying to get that cut in. Can't quite cut it. Side too high. Mixo looking to try and recover his team's attempts. But it was unsalvageable, unfortunately. Zaldazarius, though, with a good touch, tries to follow it up. And it's going to go in. That beautiful initial touch. Putting it high up the back wall. You can see a little bit of panic here out of the defenders. Seb accidentally feels backflip, man. And that one's going to drop right in crossbar down. It looks like, I believe, Janify might have had an opportunity to clear that one. But it went in in the end. Titans back on the board. Yeah, oh, okay. I was going to say that. Was that going to be a kickoff go straight for the Titans? And it looked like it almost was. Mixo here chasing it down. Looking to set it up. All Python playing in at the back getting ready to defend his team clear it out seb wins the challenge though and once again we are cancelling a lot of the momentum getting it in that corner there's nobody in defense that was Arius, runs out of boost can't get the touch seb with that defensive rotation is going to be able to get them out of that carrier situation a little bit of aggressive positioning there for the titans you saw wall python up there at the midfield line, even with both of his teammates in the corner, you can tell that they are eager to move out onto the offensive side, but they gotta be careful. Pop almost sends that one on target, it's just a little bit wide, unfortunately, for the Falcons. But here at halftime, they still maintain this advantage here in game number three. Yeah, we'll Python with a nice... There, we're gonna see Sebvo being ready on that defensive positioning. Now, again, Warpython is on top of it with these contests and these challenges, but it gets past the Seb. Mixo steals it away straight back to Bob. We're going to see a waterfall opportunity, and I... Oh, did Bob actually... All right, a bit of... A slight bit of a misplay. Maybe some miscommunication coming out from the team there, unfortunately, for the side of the Falcons. But if you're a Titans fan right now, you're uh, you're quite happy on that opportunity as Warpython. Oh, my. Was that, did that get pinched by Warpython and Bob? I think it may have. Let's take another look here. Thankfully, we have the replays for this exact reason, and that is pretty a well unsavable if your result is there. He is. No way you can effectively read that. That looked like a clean 50 50. You have to respect that he's moving upfield to try and support Wall Python on that contest. Yeah, Just didn't it, quite pan out. Yeah, no, it was deep into the Falcons' territory. You'd never expect it when your teammate's going straight at the ball for it to just go flying past you. No, sir. And, oh, that might be another opportunity. Seb with a pass back to Janify. Wow, that is a... Uh, I, I think that one might have just been in. Or yeah, technically how it was. Yeah, no, that was, that was going in. But they, they just thought they needed to style on him a little bit. 
I, I mean, that. it was still a well-executed pass play, so yeah. power to you. If there was defenders there, maybe they know. Maybe that's something they've been practicing. Get some pass backs, get those in, make sure that they're actually used. It worked out well for them. That's going to be 4 1 onto the side of the Falcons. They are looking to get advantage in this set, and they are doing a great job at it. The Titans here, though, with an opportunity to sign their second goal, and again. As, as soon as the Titans seem to get an opportunity, especially this round, the ball just gets cleared. Well and truly, I mean, as soon as they even got a chance, it was completely out of there. Zaltus area is now back in his center, but the rotation is coming in strong. And at this point, I think the Titans might just be playing to try and get a little bit, uh, a little bit back for their troubles. Now with one minute remaining, it's not often that we see three goal uh, leads diminish at all in Rocket League, and I think that it will stand true for this one minute left situation. Wall Python that does not have a good time slowing that one down. Can't get an effective touch, it's 5-1. Well, like you said, you don't really see a differential of three coming back, but a differential of four with less than a minute is uh, pretty nail in the coffin. But we have seen weirder things happen, and we could just see four kickoff goals. Okay, I was about to say, there, there might be one. Janify, though, managing to steal it away. Back to Seb. Good pass play coming out. Bop on the other side of the field, getting ready in case they try to redirect it. Managing to steal a lot of the momentum. But once again, the Falcons are just on top of it coming into game three here. I have to absolutely agree with you on that point. I, I feel like basically every change that the Titans got was a result of them, you know, making a couple of decent plays, trying to move out into the opposing end, but they were never really able to keep that possession due to maybe just a little bit of a long clear, or the pass wasn't quite what they wanted. The almost going back there with Wall Python. But, you know, anyway you slice it. They tried to play a little bit aggressively, and they got burned a couple of times for it. We ended up ending the game here at 6-1. to one. And the Falcons just did a fantastic job of shutting down any sort of offensive chance that the Titans tried to bring to the table. Yeah, no, and I, I, I think it's it's interesting, right? Because game one, we saw the Falcons barely scrape by, right? They just about managed to take the win. Then going into game two, we saw the Titans take it with a pretty decisive game. I believe it was, the scoreline was 3-1. And now coming into game three, or, or now just having played game three, it was 6-1 to the Falcons. So... Are the Falcons were the Falcons just warming up squid, do you think? Or do you think maybe it is just so back and forth? I think it might be a little bit of both, to be honest. I mean, it's difficult to say definitively at this point in time what's really happening. And I feel like, uh, you know, again, I did mention that the Titans, you know, a couple of the goals against were, you know, by virtue of getting caught out when they were trying to play a little bit too aggressively or maybe just a poor possession in front of their own net. But anyway, you slice it, you know, it is six to one against them. And that can't be taken lightly, no matter if they did end up conceding a couple of, you know, debatably preventable goals. You know, as long as you're getting scored, outscored by five goals in a, a single game of Rocket League, it can be argued that your, your opponent is just that much better. And we did see plenty of passing plays from the Falcons as well. And like I said, so many effective shutdowns. Uh, when it came to playing defense for Ludlow. So it's been a, an impactful game for them, no doubt. But how much of that is them playing like a, a good, solid roster? And how much is the Titans just getting a little bit too antsy to try and get on onto the offense? Well, I guess we'll have to see as one of the teams has decided to take a quick break, maybe mentally reset. So we'll also be doing just that. And like you said, we'll see if it's just a bit of a mental game coming out or if it is them warming up. So we'll be back with you in about five minutes.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the EGFH Finals here. And once again, we would like to thank our sponsors, the Yukon School of Engineering and the Yukon Gaming Club. We're here with the Grand Finals. I'm Squid with Novak here, and we are underway right now. Ludlow Falcons versus the Sheehan Titans, and we just saw the Falcons take the game advantage here. Three, uh, two games, 2-1 two, presently in their favor. Game number four on your screens now. Let's get this going. Yeah, and we're seeing an immediate kick off the Titans here with a great opportunity. Zout Azarius not finding the touch, though. Losing a lot of the momentum there could be costly if we see the Falcon retaliate with that with a goal to start us off. A contesting coming out there is going to land right into Zout Azarius' hands as he's going to look to try and get that infield pass towards his teammate. The double commit coming out from Janify and Bop is going to deny it, however... Back to that pass. Oh no, that whiff could have been disastrous, and it was Mixo finding goal one. And well done here to Mixo, being in that spot to make this play just in case you know what happens. And Seb, you gotta, I mean, if you're in that situation, I think your best play is to try and die for that ball as soon as possible, but he probably was not expecting that shot to come on target. So can't much blame him for that one. But now, I believe, Havik, that we have the new quickest goal of the series at just 30 seconds. Yeah, I mean, if we were correct about the last goal, then yeah, no, that, that would be the new quickest goal of the series. As Bob here looks to center it up. Wallpipe and stealing it away. Slightly too wide on the shot. Not quite hitting the target, but Bob is not going to stop this onslaught. And there was a good attempt at clear that to stop the momentum, but it actually just made it go further into their side of the field. Janify is going to be able to stop that ball. Wallpython trying to stay on top of him, though, trying to make sure he's not giving too much room to breathe. And he's doing some fancy footwork here with the boost, trying to keep it up into the air. Now, there's a chance out as Arius just needs to get it past. Looks for the fake way, but Seb gets the read. So much time for the Titans to get set up here. You can see Zalta's Arius putting in so much effort as just one individual player trying to slow down that ball from coming out of the defensive half for the Falcons. And he cut off rotation. He stayed a part of the play for at least a solid 20 seconds, allowed his teammates to get in the perfect position to approach and make sure that they have the boost to do so. Well done as far as individual effort goes. Yeah, Bob now looking to set up his team. They're looking for a goal. We're going to see it coming out from Janify with the pass from Bob. I believe this is the first shot of the game for the Falcons, and you can see the well-done execution here. Janify wisely waiting directly where that pass was destined. You can see the uh, team plays coming out here for the Falcons, where it matters most time up this game with three minutes and 18 to go. Once again, into the kickoff. Mixo sees an opportunity. There's nobody in defense. He's just going to be able to get the goal. Well, I suppose it's the yin to every yang. Where there's a passing play for the Falcons, there is a great cut by a mix. So breaking the axles of the last man back and has everything to shoot at here to put his team back in the lead. Yeah, it's three minutes already squared. Or three minutes left on the uh, clock squared. We've been through two minutes, and I think this is the most goals we've seen in fairly quick succession. Then, yeah, it's been a rather fast-paced game so far, I'll say. Yeah, that timeout definitely benefiting both teams by the looks of it. They're both playing very well. Maybe that mental reset, you know, communicate with their coaches, figure it out. But now, are we going to be able to see the Falcons bring it back and continue their lead? Or are we going to get to 2-2 with the Titans evening it out? Would not be surprising, but they still have the game to be played. And it looks like the Falcons want to say something about it. Great 50-50 there by Janify. Sam getting the damn as well, trying to slow down the defense. Coming out from Wallpython there. He's looking to set it up. Zaltz's Arius recognizing the situation and plays it patiently. Janify cutting him off, making sure he just can't boost forward there, denying his options. And this is the thing, right? You need to be paying attention, not only the ball, but where your opposition is. Janify looks for a good touch. Bob gets the touch. It's slow, but it goes in. And this is where you've got to make a tough decision as your defender on this back wall here. You can see Mixo, he has a choice to make. He can try and jump and dive for that far corner shot, or you can try to play it slow. Either way, you know that the offense has time to react to what Mixo does off the back wall and put it where he isn't. And that was a beautiful example. Another fake kickoff, and we've seen that utilized actually a couple of times now by the Falcons. Doesn't quite work out for them this time. It's right back into their own defensive end, and they have lost some boost control for it. Yeah, Mixo passing it to Zalazarius though with the use of Seb. A good cut coming out from them. Bop though stealing it away, looking for that second touch. Doesn't find it. It's Wolf Python. Manages to. Now a good play coming out. Seb 
tries to get it set up, Bob knocks it slightly too out. And I think at the moment it's so back and forth. There's two, uh, we are dead even 2-2. Two, two. The Falcons have an advantage in the set. So really what we want to be seeing is the Titans taking this win. But with a minute left on the clock, we, I, I don't want to call it too early, but we might be seeing overtime. We may very well. It does seem like a rather back and forth at the midfield right now. Neither team wants to make that critical mistake, which costs a goal, but... I mean, we have seen plenty of mix-ups by individual players or uh, pairs of players that have caused goals for, goals against, and Bob getting blocked down there, trying to receive that pass from Seb right as I call it out. Contact there from Janify either, and things slowing down, but the Falcons continue on to the offensive half. We've seen them gain momentum and pick it up rather quickly with a very high shooting percentage, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Seb from the midfield line drives it across. That was a great shot on target by Seb there. Recognized the opportunity, went over Janify, managed to find it. There was a chance there at Blue Starters area, so they're looking to try and make the save, but just couldn't quite find it. As we are, once again, going to be going into kickoff. There is a just under a minute left onto the clock for the Falcons. One goal up. They could take a two-game lead in this best of seven. It's only a one goal difference right now. Could still go to OT. A little bit of luck. I think so here. Look. Off it, but Janify gets a pat. No, it doesn't quite get it past him. Good, good defense coming out from Mixo there. I'm liking the touches. But again, this this last couple minutes, other than like that miraculous mid like midfield goal, has been very neutral base. That one's gonna be off target as well. Oh, great read by Seb. Gaining insurance so late in the game as well. 16 seconds, and that's demoralizing if I've ever seen it. Python trying to get in front of that one. Had the read and everything, but just a little bit too quick, actually, and got him in front of the play. Yeah, and I mean, that now being two goals up with 10 seconds left of the clock, we need to see a goal and a kickoff goal. And the goal that we need to see would need to happen within, like, the next six seconds. Oh, the good waterfall, though. That's an opportunity, and it happens. We need to see a kickoff goal coming out from the Titans here to tie this out if they want to get it into overtime and not give their opposition a two-goal advantage in the set. That was a beautiful shot by Mixo, but yeah, you're right. Two seconds on the clock, and I almost wonder, is it going to be another fake face-off here for the Falcons? No, they're going to opt for the direct 50-50. It was a great win as well, but Janify with no follow-up, and Bob actually keeps us alive. Yeah, Bob managing to get that touch there was unbelievably huge, right? Because if he didn't find that, it would have come down to one player. And if that was a mistake, then we would have been going into overtime. That was a great attempt coming out from the Titans. But the Falcons take game four. And definitely a closer call than I think the Falcons would have liked. But again, you know, I, I harped on the Titans for the last game where they were overcommittal on their offense and you know it was important that they got down on onto the opposing half and they were making the plays where necessary but at the same time i'd like to point out that the uh, falcons only took five shots and managed to outscore the titans who took seven and uh, you know that might not necessarily be super indicative of you know titans being a bit too aggressive on the blue half, but I still feel like there were a couple of situations where it was a preventable goal against that they were unable to make the play on. So I really feel like their destiny could very well be in their hands here as they now move on to match point to the Falcons. This is yeah. a dangerous waters for sure. Yeah, no, it is. And like you said, match point coming up, but one of the teams has requested to use their break. So we, uh, We'll be once again hopping to a quick break as we head into possibly match game coming out for the Falcons. We'll see you soon.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be jumping very, very quickly into the game there as both of the teams were ready and joined slightly too early. But that's no issue as we immediately kick it off. This is match point for the Falcons. If they can find this game, they will be the EGF full 2019 champions. So there's, there's, there's a lot riding on this. And of course, if you're a Titans fan, you want to be seeing this reverse sweep coming out right now. Well, not quite a full reverse sweep, but still a feed. Oh my goodness, that's not the way you want to start it. A demo and the net causes chaos, and Janify puts one in off of an own goal, I believe. Yeah, I mean, that is unfortunate. That was, again, it was one of those attempts where you try and save it and you cut it, and it either it 50 50s right goes in or it doesn't. I feel like actually Wallpython might have jumped to avoid also getting demolished, or he got bumped in that situation, but it definitely did not look like something that he went for himself. We'll have to check the bot on that one, but, uh, you know, any way you cut it, the Falcons now lead in their final match that they need to win. Yeah, and with the Falcons leading, that puts a lot of pressure on it, especially if they find the second goal, which they do. And this is just not conducive for the Titans. Mixo unable to make that read, and you gotta give credit. Zoltus Zeri is diving in front of that ball, trying to make the, the uh, read on the dunk, but... Just didn't quite have it, and, you know, despite the Valiant's efforts there by multiple defenders, it still finds its way in, and no touch there by Wall Python. Janify already with two goals on the board. Now, three goals up. I mean, I know we were talking about quick consecutive goals, but uh, I feel like the Falcons just completely blew that out of the water. Absolutely. Like I said earlier on, if you're going to go down by such a large margin, you want to do it early and mix up with a chance to counter here. Still another opportunity. Pass up the back walls. Off the Zeri is not the greatest touch, and it will fall out to the side. Unfortunate missed chance there for Sheehan off the face off, but they still got four minutes to make a change here. Yeah, the Titans here have plenty of time. Again, anything that's done in the first half can be repeated in the second half, so. Plenty of time, there's one goal evening it out, so, or, uh, or reducing the differential, not evening it out. Not me. That would be something. <laughs> yeah, one goal worth <laughs> three points. This isn't basketball. In it's any football. case, Walt Python there, he, he was there though. We already saw that once. A pinch coming out of the corner that ended up going across too fast for the Titans to react to, but they were ready this time. Commendable. Yeah, I mean, it worked out for them, and they managed to find that first goal, bring themselves a stepping stone closer to evening out the score. As, again, we're seeing the pressure coming out from the Falcons. The Falcons want to keep that cushiony three-goal differential, but if the Titans keep playing like they are at the moment, we should be seeing them catching up fairly quickly. I absolutely agree. Like I said, I think their offense is solid. We just can't see them overcommit and Janify. That was a close call. Looked like he didn't have the angle to get that one away for a second. Another shot on target pops there for the save, but the Titans starting to heat up here as we move into the final three minutes of gameplay, and I have to say, this is a rather impressive effort overall. I've had a more important point to make, but I can't think about it. I'll let you know if I, if I do. Yeah, I mean, but at the moment, the Falcons putting on the pressure once again. We were talking about how the Titans were turning up the heat, but the Falcons are soaring currently. Here's the problem I have with that, though. I want to see Falcons get more aggressive on the offense like they are now. And I have to say, it's very nice to see because just trying to box out your opponent can go bad in so many ways. If you're not making sure that you're keeping them boxed on their own half, they will get their own boost control and they will find a way to push out into your own half, resulting in more attempts on your own net. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like that's, that's the, uh, the main goal, right? Is reduce the amount of attempts that your opposition has on the goal. Yeah, so for the, for the Falcons right now, their game plan should most likely be just try to keep hammering on the offense as much as they can. Yeah, take shot after shot after shot. Eventually, one's going to go in. Now, Seb here with the clear bit of a pinch coming out. Janify running it in. Gets the boost. Is prepared to get the tap. Zalazari is contesting it. Seb flying through. And that's going to be goal number four. And no contest here on the goal line. Bit of a desperate attempt there. Zalta Zarius getting that initial touch. Mixo forcing that ball towards the net. But Wall Python just did not have the boost to make the play on the net. And it was a perfect. You know, if you're looking at that from a fundamental standpoint, that is a perfect trade for the Titans. But 
not having any boost in the net is the one thing that can really tear that play apart. And unfortunately, that seems to be the condition that was met. Yeah, and that's that's how it is. One minute left on, or one minute thirty left on the clock. Three goal differential. It's looking good for the Falcons. Trying to fight here with the touch. We do see Mixo in a good position though. Wolf players on playing it even further back, being prepared. Good tap by Janify is going to get denied by Wolf Python. Bop coming out, recenters it. That was Arius in position. Managed to get the touch. There's it now. Again, lots of back and forth. Seb looking to get it past. Gets it past one. Gets it past two. Gets the touch. It goes too wide. Python now has the ball, grabs the boost, needs to get it past. Oh, he gets it past Janify, managed to get a touch. Mixo looking for the one up and once again goes too wide. Both sides barely just missing goals. And yet, for one of these teams, that's a lot more heartbreaking than for the other. Long shot here now by Wall Python, but it will be cleared away by Bop. And with every second that ticks away, the Titans' hopes diminish. Good thought there by Zaltazari is trying to clear it away from Janify, but they can't follow it up. The Titans getting desperate to put something on the board at this point. Yeah, and oh, well, Python there. The really good save coming up from Bob. Just hitting that backboard, but he was there in time. Which shows show how much momentum there was, because that ball did not get very high. So back and forth. Ten seconds left on to the clock. The Falcons in an absolutely dominating position. Think There's nothing that the Titans can do about this at this point now. Yeah, I think it's safe to say congratulations to the Ludlow Falcons for being DFH for 2019 Rocket League champions. What a game. And, you know, I, I will say this was really the Falcons kind of dominating for this point. I mean, the Titans... Had a good run back there in game number two is an excellent response to a game one loss. But my God, if the Falcons did not really dominate for the remainder of this series in between all three of their players, they had the individual talent and the team play and coordination in order to close out this series effectively on both offense and defense, making the saves where needed that the Titans just, you know, could not contend with on either end of the ball. I mean, we didn't see such heroic saves from the Titans nor did we see as many good quality shots from them. And like, again, I, I, I will say a commendable effort on multiple fronts with the tenacity to try and drive through until the very end. But you just can't beat that kind of skill outmatching the Falcons had today. Well done overall and uh, enjoy that prize and that title. Yeah, and once again, I just, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. And of course, congratulations to the Falcons for taking that the season. I'd once again like to find, find, uh, thank our sponsors, the Yukon School of Engineering and the Yukon Gaming Club for helping make this season possible. We'll be right back with some Super Smash Brothers Ultimate after the break. I want to thank Squid for joining in and we'll be back momentarily.
Hello everyone and welcome to the EGFH Fall 2019 Finals for Smash Brothers. Today we have two different matches for you all. We'll be taking the first round coming out into the winners finals between Ludlow Falcons Liam and RHS's Skits. Whoever takes the victory will move on to the grand finals on the winners side. Unfortunately Norris could not make it today so we'll be jumping straight into the grand finals after the initial set. We'll play a best of five bracket reset. And whoever wins that will be crowned our EGFH Fall 2019 Smash Champion. My name is Navik, and for this series, I'm joined by Austin La Vista. Yo, what's going on, man? So I, I, I find it so interesting that the person down in Losers Finals wasn't able to make it. It's really unfortunate because we want to see like our top three players play. But it's also kind of cool because now we're going to get two. Like this, they're going to be these two are going to be playing a lot of games, like to a maximum of 15 total. You know, the best two or three sets. So when you think of it like that. It's definitely going to be like a long, like, you know, those like first to 10 money matches that happen like in Marvel a lot. It's yeah. going to be something like that. You know, I do love me some Marvel. And uh, yeah, oh, no, yeah. So that, that first to 10 concept is definitely a, a good representation of what we'll be seeing at the moment. And it's Wario against Palutena, which I, I, I personally think is quite an interesting matchup. Yeah, uh, right out the gate, you know, this, this is something that we saw a lot back in like when the game was first released back in month number one. Over like, uh, for instance, at like Let's Make Moves happening in the Tri-State area, for instance, we had a lot of like Palutena's coming from like Nairo from DeBuzz fighting off against Tweaks Wario, who first put on the map. So we've seen this matchup a lot back in the day, but not as much recently. You know, like Palu, not saying that Palu has fallen off per se, because like there's still a lot of Palutena's out there, but we don't just not not seeing as many of them at like the higher level. Yeah, and I, th and I think that's one of those things, right, is that Palu's a really good overall character. And like you said, there's a lot of Palu players coming out, but there's just... she She's kind of a, a jackal-traded master of none, right? Like, she has some absolutely mm. phenomenal things and does pretty much everything well. But when when you come down to those really niche specialized cases, the characters that just manage to outperform in a lot of cases, and I think Wario might be one of them. Yeah, I mean, they're both going to be jumping up in the air a lot. Wario has a lot of air control that he can put into his favor whenever he's going up in there. But it's commitment, but a good catch from Liam, uh, a.k.a. Phantom. Going to catch that back here on the edge of the stage to take away that first stock. It's very even right now, though, because Skits has him at a pretty decent percent. He hasn't used his waft yet, so that's still going to be something that's going to be charging. Whenever Wario gets that full waft on charge after like a minute 54 or something like that, he can then be, do just some devastating combos to defeat his opponent. Yeah, and that's the other thing as well, though, to take into consideration in this matchup. Liam was undefeated throughout the eight-week season. Really? Yes. So, like, he, so he's here to, like, try to show that he doesn't want to, like, that happen again. He wants to keep that, that record going. Yeah, no, I mean, and what a record to have, right? Being undefeated, then going into finals, winning finals on winner's side, then winning grand finals. But, again, 108% yeah. extra credit for Liam at the moment. He's got a massive lead. Yeah, it is a massive lead, but you, once again, Wario does have that waft ready to go. He can easily turn the tides. All he needs to do is get Palu to 50% or so, and Skits can easily get like an up tilt, a nair, and just combo that into a waft. And he's already looking to try to get those combos going. He's throwing out the nair a little bit too much, though, because you see Phantom just falling down with the back air. It has a little bit of like a guard stun on it to be able to block through the swing. So one, one stock to two. Skits is going to have to pull out that combo coming up soon. Good ladders there coming out again. The neutral from Palutena is so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it, 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 it does everything, man. It, it does your dishes, it cleans yeah. the car. Like it, it, it literally sets up the combos, does a lot of combo damage. It also set, it can kill at higher percents as well. But the problem is like, it's actually not as safe as people make it out to believe. If you hold down shield, you can get a punish afterwards as long as you go for like an out of shield option. If you see it coming, if you're jumping around, you're playing like, mad aggressive, you're gonna get caught. Yeah, and it will punish you over and over again if you keep going into it. We saw the down air there coming out from Wario. Again, Skits here is being put into a position where there's just so much aggression. But like you said, he does have that wolf ready. It is in kill percent. He just needs to find it. The grab coming out there though. Yeah, and at this point, Skits might hold on to the Waft. He might try to take the stock naturally and save the Waft for the final stock, because that, that could be something that Wario wants to do, because if you if he uses it now, he might not have a tough time, but right there, you saw him. He was trying to be cheeky with that fart. He actually wafted on the bike to extend the hurt box to make it last longer to try to catch Phantom off guard. He didn't fall for it, though. He's still alive, and he's out of Waft, so now he's putting himself at a pretty heavy deficit. Yeah, and I think, I think that just goes to show a good understanding of the character overall. I feel like something that just picked up Wario would really not consider using the bite to extend the hurt box. 
All in a simple dash attack is all you need. Phantom gonna take away that stock with a two stock victory. Game number one going in his favor. Now remember, this is a best three of five set in this best two of three uh, total sets. So this is only the game, first game of who knows how many we're about to see. Yeah, we, we this could go back and forward. I think statistically what we could see four total. Like like four four total. Uh, no games? three. Yeah, we could see no. We could see uh, three best of fives, couldn't we? Because we could see somebody take game one, go win a side, then yep. loser resets and then wins again. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, like we could have a total of fifteen games. I mean, we'll see what happens. Like this is the thing is, game ones never tell the whole story. You always got to remember that players are able to adapt. There's a lot of mental games that goes into this too, and they're jumping right back into it. A lot of the times when we were watching bracket matches from prior, it, earlier in the tournament, like a couple weeks ago, like it, it, it was like people would take their time counterpicking the stage, counterpicking their characters, but that was so quick that they already knew he's sticking with Wario. Skids believes in this character. It's probably his main. It's probably the one he's most comfortable with, and it's the one he's going to try to use to take this victory over Phantom. So let's jump into game two. Yeah, it, it, yeah, and again, like you said, this was right back into it, right? They they already knew what they were going to be playing on. I don't know if there's a gentleman's agreement to play on Battlefield, but at the moment, oof, oh, oof. and again, a really good early start coming out from Phantom. Yeah, it, it already just so much damage dished out against him, keeping him off stage a lot. You saw that there was a there's an opportunity for Skits to try to get some uh, extra damage by getting that uh, pu pushing him off stage and controlling the stage, but every single time he manages to escape whatever combo Skits is trying to set up against him, falls back down on the stage and look at him, he's being cheeky again with those uh, with those explosive flames. He's throwing them out while falling below the stage to make them safe. There's no landing lag afterwards because there's no land for him to land on. He's just gonna teleport back onto the stage. Yeah, and it, it like you said, it makes the option far more safer and gives you gives you some decent options to like to try and follow as well off of the stage. Because Palutena does have options and it wouldn't be the first time that we see Palutena's recovery kill. But you know what's gonna kill is that back air. You saw how many times Phantom threw that out. He, he was fishing for it so hard because the thing is, he'll, he, uh, one of his favorite things to do on this stage in particular is to like be on the stage, drop down to the platform, throw out a back air. As long as he spaces it well, it's pretty safe on shields uh, and, and it kills. So he just kept throwing it out until eventually did the job. I mean, if it, if it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? And he managed to find that first start. And again, already starting to build up a bit of a lead. Like you said, though, as soon as Wario gets to 50% and has the waft, he can just completely turn it around. So if he's able to find this stock about now and keep the pressure that he's putting onto Phantom, this will be a really good opportunity for Skits. Well, so right there, that was a little unfortunate for Phantom. You saw him trying to get back onto the stage. Uses the be a little bit too early, so he couldn't catch onto the stage. But fantastic ledge trapping coming up from Skits regardless. You saw him covering so many different options. And hold on, he's looking for the up tilts. This could be devastating if he manages to catch two more of those. The Nair, he's at that prime percent. He could easily get a combo into a waft. He manages just to fall. He's fishing for it, though. And you know Phantom's on the lookout for it. He's so desperate for those up airs because it'll combo so easily. The up tilts, and he missed up. What happened? And he died for it. What? <laughs> oh no! That was so unfortunate. He missed. He whiffed the waft, and Phantom oh. punished it. Oh no! Not like this, man. Like, you saw it. He was so hungry for the up air, the neutral air, the up tilts, any of them to combo to pop Palutena into the air so that he could just go for the waft right afterwards. And the second he got it, he whips the waft and he SDs. And he, oh gosh, I don't that, know. That's gonna be game number two. I still can't get over the whiff of the waft. It happens on occasion, but you hate to see it happen. Like you said, Austin. Not like this. Man, okay, so that last stock where he just fell to his death, I, I obviously he didn't he, he didn't have his resources counted out correctly. Not I don't know if it was like a double jump was miscounted or he didn't expect to get off his bike that late. Regardless, that could have that could have been uh, potentially some mental damage after the uh, the second stock where he whiffed it and he his morale was just sunk. So maybe that's what caused the SD afterwards. So, I mean, it's only the first set, so you got a lot of time to kill, but giving your opponent a 2-0 lead Letting them have that high, not a good start. Especially because we're going into Grand Final or fin Grand Finals after this, right? You, being at the loser mm -hmm. side of Grand Finals is always, there's a lot more going to it because you have to fight twice as hard as your opposition to get the victory. Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on him. But speaking of pressure, this right now on the ledge, 
you're seeing a lot of action coming out from Skits. I think this is where Skits likes to shine, is when he's hitting Phantom off stage. I feel like his ledge trapping against him is starting to come into fruition a little bit, especially on a stage like Battlefield where he's covering like both the platform and the ledge. But now it's the tables have turned a little bit. Now it's him trying to get back onto the stage. Yeah, Phantom there showing some really good positioning, hitting these grabs, finding that he's going to be able to take the stock. 69% is uh, is not too bad. Again, he is in that prime waft position, but Warrior doesn't have it just yet. Yeah, especially at this point where he's got him at 91%, he can easily just like go for the F tilt off stage, a potential back air to get the kill. Very hungry for it. Good patience from Phantom. You saw him. He didn't immediately go for the stage once casting onto the ledge because if he would have done that, he would have been easily caught by that forward tilt. Yeah, he would have caught those warrior hands. But like you said, great patience here coming out. And Liam's building up that percentage, 113%. We're going to see Rage kicking it soon for Palutena. And, but, okay, Ooh. we are just going to be able to find it there, right? It I was, mean, honestly, was, the anti-air? Yeah, it was, it was the right call to make. Good option select coming out from him. Yeah, I mean, you, well, you want to go for something like that when your opponent's like holding shield. Because when they do that, like, you can, like, nine times out of ten when your opponent's holding shield, they want to jump. Yeah. They want to jump, they want to do something out of it, so that's like the correct option to go for at that point. Like you're saying, the corner pressure and just the, the ledge pressure that we're seeing coming out from oh. the skits. Oh no! Did it, it almost what happened. happened! The thing is, like, while he was doing the double up airs, it like got fully charged, and then he died for it again! This is so, I don't know, maybe it's like he doesn't have the combo down, because maybe... Potentially, it could be like because it's an online environment. Maybe the combos feel weird or different in an offline sense. Because like that's like that's like Wario 101. Is you practice those waft combos because those net you free kills. Yeah, I mean 50% on like borderline anybody is 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 pretty <laughs> comfortable. Yeah, especially when he's in winners finals already. Like I'm wondering like if something's going on. Yeah, I mean. They I'm sure we'll get informed at some point. That's very, very good play here. Sticking it out now. We are one-to-one -one stock. This could be Skits' chance to bring it back, right? He's not in kill percent yet. He, he just he wants to be playing it patient, kind of finding those picks where he can gain that advantage. But if Liam manages to get some good edge guards coming out here, this could be a game set match. Yeah, not only does he want to play patient in order to try to like bait out an attack from Phantom, but also he's building that waft little by little and that could come in clutch. So uh, and under normal circumstances, it's up to the winner to be the aggressor or to, to be the camper, right? To play a little bit more defensive. But in this situation, because you're fighting against a Wario on your final stock, it can get kind of testy. Hold on a second. He's looking for the forward tilt. He thought he was going to roll. He bet it all on that. He was hoping for the roll. It would have caught him and it would have killed. Yeah, that, that was that was the, the kind of all or nothing, right? The swan song coming out from Warrior. But wait a minute, he's, he's looking to make some opportunities here. He's not willing to give up just quite yet. Oh, look at that. He's trying to bait out an early recovery. Tries to get into the two frame. The bite held on too long. Gets it, tosses his food back out, spits it out, but he's coming back. Does Liam make it? He gets it. Oh, oh my goodness. And if he hit the sacred fire there, it does. He's going to be able to find the follow up. Again, this is all or nothing coming out from both of these players at the moment. Will we be seeing Phantom taking the victory, or are we going to go to another match? Uh, no. no, we're seeing the victory. The victory is coming out clutch. You saw it, though. Phantom just ran in there, dash attacked, called out the landing. Even if Skits threw out an attack during that, there's a guard point on the shield that prevents him, makes it a little bit safer to call it out. And it, it's... Palutena's dash attack is so good at catching landings because of that. It catches aggressive options, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and it looked for a second there, right? Like you said, he kind of, kind of all or nothing to that waft, and it, it, it whiffed again. He didn't get yeah. the, it didn't get the. He, he went for the read on the roll, and it he just didn't quite find it. I, I gotta give him respect though, because like when you're in a situation like that, sometimes you just need a power play. Because that if he managed to catch that, that would have turned the tide so heavily in his favor. But he, he continued to play so well in that final stock. You saw him rack. He was at like what was it, 119 percent or something, fighting against Palu, who was at like two. Managed to bring it all the way to an even game where it was so so clutch and close again between the two competitors. But now we see Phantom taking it to grand finals and it's up to skits to try to reset the bracket again what would normally happen guys is skits would be going into losers finals to play but the losers finals competitor unfortunately could not make it so that it's going to be a dq and he automatically moves into the grand finals yeah which is you know if you're if you're the side of skits at the moment you want to you want to be able to just you just finished playing 
your winner's finals. You lost it, but now you can go straight into grand finals and keep playing it now that you're kind of used to and warmed up against the play style. Yeah, get that run back. So again, just like in winner's finals, game number one looks like it's starting on Pokemon Stadium 2. A, ver a very common starter for a lot of players. It's a good neutral stage. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually a really good stage for Palutena, but it's also good for Wario as well. So that's why I'm not too shocked about seeing it. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Uh, again, it's a little bit bigger stage. You're gonna see a little bit less like uh, ledge trapping this coming out from Skids right at the beginning because it's it, it's more difficult to push him off stage when it's so big like this. And look at Phantom. He's just throwing out projectiles. He's chill on the edge of the stage. He doesn't even care. Auto reticle. Throw it out all day, every day. Yeah, it's happening. He managed to get the back or oh, the back throw there as well. He's looking to try and get that punish he was expecting. The full commit to try and get back onto the stage coming out from Skids. He goes for it and gets the hit as well. He is committed to try and get the spike. Well, I mean, that's a really good option for Paolo. Oh, the explosive flame killed. I did, I did not expect that. You saw uh, Skids roll right into it in the center and gets caught by the nick of the flame. Managed to send a stock away. That's going to be first blood going to Phantom and already starting to get the uh, overlap in terms of percentage with these neutral air combos right out the gate. You, it, it hurts so much to get by neutral air at low percents because you just know you're going to rack up so much damage. Yeah, Liam had a really good read for the cross up there on to Skits, but decided to go for the explosive flame. I think thinking he was going to be able to get him off stage. Mm -hmm. Something like that. That could have really been helpful for him, right? I mean, it pushes him off. It gets him into a really nice position to start set up ledge trapping, which is, I think, Skits' forte. Yeah, but I uh, didn't quite find it again. Anthem here with some phenomenal reads, and he's he's playing this out really, really well. Really, really strong. He's almost two-stocking his opponent. Okay, he doesn't even care about the bite. Runs in there, gets the grab, tosses the bike out. I don't want to hear tow that stuff out of here. Three stocks to one. Things are looking a little bleak for Skits. Yeah, I mean, he is, of course, in kill percentage. He, he could be taken out. The waft is ready, but I really... Really don't want to be seeing Skits using it on a 112 pallu. Yeah, when he's got three stocks to play, like you yeah. need that, like you need that, like uh, that moment, that special moment that just br evens up the entire game. Forward tilt, not enough to get the kill. Fantastic DI coming out from Phantom. Can he get this ledge trap? He fainted out going for a trump, but instead couldn't catch the uh, neutral get up. Gets the forward tilt, smacks that booty, sends him into a second stock, and now this is an opportunity for Skits to even up this game. Yeah, and this is the thing, right? Skits has waft. All he needs to find is a good combo, good setup, and we could be seeing Liam in kill percentage, but he is at 110 on his last stock as well. And now anything coming out from Palu should probably kill. Yeah, up smash will do the trick, but a little bit laggy on that. Got the shield coming out. Very hungry for the neutral air. You see Phantom playing extremely safe, holding out the shield, waits for the perfect moment to get the grab to set up for a nice conversion into the back air to take away yet another game. This is the second set, game number one, that Phantom is now taking four games in a row. My god. I mean, this this is the opportunity, right? I said it at the start. I said Phantom hasn't been defeated in the regular season. And he's looking to just completely roll over finals and grand finals. Yeah, like it, look, it looks like it's... The thing is, like, even though if you look at the score, right, of the first set, it was a 3-0. That, he won the first game. He looked pretty dominant in that game. But the first set, like, those games are close. I think yeah. when it's happening on PS2, like, I, th I think Phantom has the edge. But both of those games on Battlefield against Skits were so close. So like the set, the set count never tells the whole story, you know? Yeah, no, it never does. And you, you see that in any esports, right? But specifically fighting games, I think you, you don't get to, it's it's not like a 0 0.1 because they got 90%. It, it just kind of flat out makes it look like that they've stomped them. But when they are as close as they have been, especially that first set, like you said, it's uh yeah, it doesn't tell the whole story at all. But kicking it off now, Fresh start, right? It's a uh, obviously Phantoms one up, but we can't, we can't be seeing Skits just get just get spammed by the projectiles once again. Yeah, like you saw right there again, Wario. What happened? Did he lose his double jump somewhere? I think he lost his double jump somewhere and then just didn't recognize. It's gone. Yeah, that's extremely unfortunate. Gonna be taking a stock before even taking a hit there. And Phantom's gonna add in some mental damage as well with those uh, constant barrage of taunts. Yeah. 
Okay, we're seeing those skits. It, it, you can see the cogs going, right? You can see him looking for the setup, but he just can't find the entry point. Yeah, it, it's it's because Phantom's playing so defensive. It, 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 not defensive in like a traditional campy way, but he's playing reactionary, right? Like yes. he's waiting for him to come and approach, and Phantom just kind of knows what he's gonna do and holds shield, waits for the opportunity, and then swings back at him and starts racking up those combos. Yeah, he's playing to counter, not to not to force him to react, which which is a completely valid way of working. It's working so well for Phantom right now. Yeah, and it could frustrate your opponent too, because like they have to force an answer, right? Right there, he finally runs in there with a bite, which is a little unsafe if it whiffs, right? Yeah, and then got got arguably punished because I believe he took more percentage from the explosive play. And that's gonna be yet Good another stock. stock. Uh, Things are looking a little bleak here for Skits, man. I don't know. Like, this is a yet another game where three stocks to one. Something happened after that first set. Like, he's playing differently. It looks like he's playing more aggressive and just trying to force the kill instead of letting it come naturally, you know? Yeah, and that, that's that's completely reasonable, as, although if you actually look at it, a mental point, right? He just got sweeped in the first set. He wants to prove that he can beat Liam more than anybody else because he's completely undefeated, right? And you want to be the guy, especially in Grand Finals, wow. to beat him. But at the moment, Phantom here taking game number two. That call out? Like, he just, he was chilling. He saw he's the bike coming out, and he's like, you're, you're going to jump out of this bike right here. And he, he actually readied the up air before the jump animation even went through. Yeah, so, he, like, he just knew he was going to get caught by it. Yeah, Phantom is completely in Skit's head right now. Like, 100%. And, and, and Skit just goes for the immediate rematch. Go back to Battlefield. I want to run, run back, because, like, I, is he about to get 6-0'd? Like... That, that's not a good story. You want to get at least one game. Get a point on him. I, I believe Skits can do this, man. Yeah, no, we've seen some some moments of glory coming out from Skits, right? Unfortunately, there's been a lot of whiffs on the wafts, but he's he's been able to to set himself up. He's almost taken a couple games. And and that's the thing. Yeah. Like you said, the scoreline doesn't say everything, because at the moment, if you were to look at the scoreline, it's 5-0. And that, that, that doesn't look good anywhere, like especially in those like money, those hundred dollar money matches, you know, just to ten. Like yeah. those, those are just like I've seen sets of those where someone is up like seven zero, and then the other player starts to finally make a comeback. So like it's it's always possible. It's always possible to adapt to your opponent. But we'll just see what happens. He's doing a good job right now. He's got him on the edge. This is where he thrives, right? He doesn't allow Palutena stage control. He's going off so deep, though, in the process. Look at that. He pushed him back with the forward tilt. Try, just, try to buy him some space, kind of like a little tag you're it. Yeah, but he's committing, and it's working out for him. He had a lead percentage for a second there. Oh, I'm the shielding a little bit too hit. early there. Oh, he waited. He, he, he punched with a jab? Like, I'm not sure about that one. Like, he, he literally just stood there, waited for Wario to air dodge right in front of him, and then he just jabbed. I don't know if that was on purpose or if you just yeah, like Yeah, like, is that throws. more BM though? Like more trying to trying to get yeah. in his head? I actually can't tell if that was bad manners or just a delayed reaction. I honestly could not tell you. Yeah, yeah, I mean it could be either way by the way that Liam's been taunting. Yeah. Okay, gets the side B, gets the kill, tosses the bike. Oh, he didn't get off stage completely. Right. He's not fully BM'd. Warrior's got his bike back. Yeah. Okay, he's, doing, he's using the bike as a projectile. This is really good for like an edge guard opportunity. You saw that phantom immediately teleported. He warped out of there because if you get caught by the, the bike chain off stage like that, yeah, it's hurts. rather difficult and you take a lot of damage in the process. Yeah, 100%. But, and, and this is what we mean, right? Is Skits again is putting on so much pressure. He just needs to be able to find the kill. He gets caught by the stray neutral air. So he's eating a 53 damage for it. You gotta be careful. That's 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 what Palutena can do with with the ladder and uh, and some neutrals. But well, that's gonna be the stock here, right? He has waft, right? He can. All he needs to do is find a setup combo. He could get a stock lead. Yeah, like this is his opportunity, right? He needs to hit him a couple more times before that combo will start to like the the, the waft combos start to work around forty to fifty percent against Palo. So he needs to get get her to that prime percent first and hold on a sec. She's oh, right. For a second She's ready. There. It was looking so good, but we cannot be seeing Liam take another stock there. The punishes that come out from this man as soon as Skits drops anything. 
Yeah, and every single time you notice a phantom gets pushed off stage. Oh, okay, there's a good punish. Gets the kill, just throws out the WAP. No combo necessary because jab is a commitment for Palu. Yeah, and, uh, and it's worked out for him now. Now all he needs to be doing is not eating projectiles and finding there's the bite, the good, good bite coming out there. Yeah, instead of eating the projectiles, eating the opponent, get that health back. Yeah. Okay, I mean, equivalent exchange. Yeah, and exactly. I mean, yeah. it's, it's all stocks and stuff, right? You know, like, yeah. it's, it's how the economy works. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure Wario frequents the stock market. He seems like the kind of guy that would. But we see Palu with the bite trying to use it as the edge guard. The upbeat or the, uh, the up smash coming up. Oh, the down tilt. Hold on a second. This could be bad. He sets up up nicely. I, that was a free grab right there because he did the bike up like that. Yeah. He's got to be careful of the explosive flames. Hold on a second. He's bringing it back. Skits. Can he do it? Man is making an effort. Oh, he's again. playing patiently. He's not going so aggressively. He doesn't get the bite. Is this oh, it? He's looking so hard oh, for okay, it. You saw the, the mix-ups from Phantom 2. Goes on the platform again and again. Gets back on the stage. The roll. Tried to go for the grab. He needs a good cross up here to make something happen, but Liam goes for the cross up, gets it, and that is going to be Phantom from the Ludlow Falcons High School taking the title of EGFH for 2019. My goodness, for a second there, my man Skits looked like he was about to pull something out. I wonder what's going through Skits' brain right now, right? Because, like, so many times that was not the only game that was like that there were two other games where it was so close and down to the wire and it looked like skits could easily bring it back and but he just couldn't pull off the final stock like yeah. it just did not get a game like it, it, it's got to be heartbreaking man uh, they always say second place is like one of the worst placings you can get in a tournament because yeah because it's, you were, it's you more, were so close it's more bitter than third place right that's how the, the full saying goes is you'd rather yeah. get third than second because second means you almost got first and That's why that dude DQ'd, man. He won in third. Like, I don't want to yeah, well, deal with this pressure. It's, it's the galaxy brain play, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, again, it's it's been a pleasure. That was a f much quicker series than I think any of us expected due to us, of course, not being able to see that loser's finals. But I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. I'd like to personally thank and the pleasure of casting with you, Austin. It's been wonderful. Yeah, and same here, man. Uh, you pronounce your name Navik, right? Is that, that how you pronounce it? That is 100% correct. I got it. Let's go. I didn't Most mess it up. Most people call me Navak, so there you go. But, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be hopping to a quick break as we switch over to Overwatch. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Yukon School of Engineering and the Yukon Gaming Club for helping make this season possible. And I'd like to thank the schools for playing. We'll be right back.
Hello and welcome, esports fans, to the EGFH Fall 2019 Finals for Overwatch. Today we have a first of four match between the Ludlow Falcons and the Amity Spartans. First off and foremost, I want to thank our sponsors, the people who make this possible. That's the Yukon School of Engineering and the Yukon Gaming Club. We really appreciate that. I'm FBI Tugboat, and joined today here by Bishop. Bishop, how are we doing today, my man? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. You want to break down the map pools and how this is going to be going here today? Right. So it's a little bit weird on the map pool here. We're starting on Nepal, and then mm -hmm. after a full map is played, the losing team is going to pick the next map. And it's going to go in the order of Control, Assault, Escort, Hybrid, Control. So you're going to keep doing that until one team reaches four points, at which point they win. There you go. Yeah, so not necessarily a uh, not necessarily a best of seven or anything like that. Really just a first to four. Now, what that means, of course, Bishop, is that we could be seeing a whole lot of Overwatch today. That was the Rocket Ooh. League and the uh, Super Smash that I think went, pretty, went through pretty quickly. I think a lot of people got the opportunity to see that. Yeah, it could go pretty long here if uh, we get a lot of ties when applicable. We're just going to keep rattling games off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course, with our controls, first of which is Nepal, as Bishop said. With controls, there is not a possibility for a tie. There's a winner and there's a loser. Very American ideal. I love it. <laughs> with these others, you know, it's uh, perfectly uh, perfectly possible to tie. Even our beloved King's Row here, which looks like to be our uh, our kind of our theme for the, the wintry... Uh, Wintry Overwatch update. Yeah, you definitely can get a lot of ties on that if uh, people aren't able to get on point. Yes, sir. With our hybrid maps, with any of the assaults, uh, it's entirely possible for a team not to take a single tick or just to take the first point, not the second one. I get any progress on the second. I feel like that is probably the most uh, frequent uh, you know, occurrence of a tie or causer of a tie, I guess. Right, but we're loading in here on Nepal, getting ready to see what comps people run. Probably going to be a lot of shields. Yes, I think that's a very, very fair assumption there, Bishop. Double shields has been the meta for quite a while. We did see some patch changes, right? The big uh, big nerfs to individual shields. I think the biggest real nerf was to Sigma. Arissa saw herself a nice little increase in health, so got an extra 50 armor on top. Only character in the game to have ever had 450 health initial starting you know we got uh what you got a, a hundred on baby diva you got or excuse me 150 on baby diva and tracer you got 200 on what three quarters of the three quarters <laughs> of the players in the game you got yourself a 300 on uh what uh uh may doomfist reaper i think uh right. bastion was at 1.400 or 300 and then of course your your smaller tanks your your zarya's up until recently the is 400 now arissa 450 how interesting 500 for a couple tanks and 600 for a couple tanks but uh yeah, what, what else? Uh, we saw big Sigma changes in the form of that big shield going from 1,500 down to 900. This is what, like a 40% decrease? Right, and Sigma only coming out here for one side. Assuming we're not getting trolled, we might actually get to see a Reinhardt here on point one. Yep, but as we anticipated, double shields. We'll run through these teams on the right. That's Amity Beat Spartans in the red. That's Orange Juice, Nosy, Osiron, Nevermore, Singe, and Desi. No new faces, no new names here to the Amity Beat Spartans. We'll go through with the Ludlow Falcons here in a bit as a lot of it going going already. Zoom up top. Typical DPS action coming out from him. He's got that pharmacy combination. He is making the most out of it. Super low is a Kuru. That's uh, the Baptiste here for Ludlow Falcons doing a great job uh, getting that healing out already at 92, but not able to live through Nevermore's swing. This is a Reinhardt who's getting it in early and fast and hard. You know, Amnony getting onto the point early and taking that, but then getting cleaned up. Unfortunately, Lucio not allowing them to hold there very long. Yeah, the uh, the Moira Lucio combination very very popular as of recent. A little bit of a different look over by the Ludlow Falcons, but that was a Nevermore Reinhardt that got so much damage in so quickly. He literally got a shatter off, and just with a couple more, you know, even just like Desi, right? Just on the on the Hanzo. If he had those storm arrows up, that might have been a different story. We might be seeing the Amity Spartans up to about twenty percent now, but it's not the case. I yeah, really thought first. Amity was gonna take it there after getting such a demanding hold, but just not able to take out that pharmacy with Hanzo. Yeah, uh, and they still don't have the, uh, the, the the hit scan, so we'll see how that goes and how that'll change coming in here. Dragon's out first, Goldfish taking himself a two-piece, taking out the 
entire healing core of the Amity Spartans, and just like that, that is a one-two fight. Ludlow's alt economy here is just going to do them so many favors with the point already up to 45%. He's only got a couple of hits here to take it back, and no ultimates ready. Maybe a Lucio on this next push, but he's going to be dropping that solo. Yeah, and uh, I would not be surprised if they need all of that there. Zoom's uh, barrage from up top could definitely make quick work of that one. Schnark's Sigma ultimate, you know, that could definitely, definitely be a... Uh, that could eat up a Lucio... Uh, this very, very quickly, but here comes the barrage. Two piece off, main tank, main support deleted, and we're looking at an Amity Spartans team now with their back against the wall, Bishop. Yeah, they're gonna have to slide in here right at the last second if they want to get this. They do have the Lucio ult to push in, but I mean, with even just that Sigma ult ready to go and counter the push and a Mercy ult for good measure, it might be rough for them to get them. Here comes the Sigil. There's the. Sound Bear, as is tradition, now rotating around as an Amity Spartans team, but losing Nosy, not gonna have a Blizzard coming into the next team fight. Nevermore with a Shattered down, but that one not nearly as effective as his first. Is This is looking like all but a team wipe? Yeah, a, a decent Shatter there from Nevermore taking three out, but unfortunately not, not enough space for his team to fly in. I feel like, uh, yeah, the main tank here, Nevermore doing a really great job over on the side of Amity Spartans, but just uh when he's gotten the positioning he's gotten the space to get these shatters down just uh, haven't had teammates alive and in position to make the most out of it right yeah if you don't really get those out early it's it's difficult for enough follow-up to come through to really change the course of that fight and a 100 percent to 11 lead for ludlow on that yeah interesting stuff i mean that was uh pretty fast right what, yeah i'd, saw, I'd saw like to have then, seen uh, some more trading i mean and he did start out with the point there but not able to retake it after that initial mm -hmm. hold maybe they just need a stronger defense once they do get a stranglehold on that point like they had on the first push especially if you're going to be running that lucio you really want to get set up and in position but mm -hmm. I, I do like how aggressive they got with it and of course like you said that was uh just a result of having lucio right but never yeah. more swinging away up the front and that more right behind healing away uh he, he got one pick early and, and again, so much damage to get a shattered off, what, in the first 11 seconds? Yeah, seconds that was the, the first fight, actually. He hadn't even died at that point and come back. He had that ready to go, but not quite enough work. We might see it work slightly better if we are running that uh, that same composition here from the inside, but we'll have to see. I'm sorry, what was that last part that you said? Oh, that composition might work a little bit better for moving to the inside point rather than that one's a bit more closed up. Ah, yes, yes. Especially coming up here next to uh, Nepal map, I do believe this is uh, this is going to be a Sanctum one, so a lot of boot capabilities here. A little bit of, uh, you know, Arissa action, a little bit of Lucio action. And if they do run this fair again, that's going to be make for some, you know, those instant environmental kills. Love to see him. Can't res him. Right. <laughs> but also less space for her to move around. I mean, you could still get some work done in here as far, but you don't have quite as much height to work with. But mm -hmm. if they're going to if they're going to be sticking with this, if that's their, their bread and butter DPS composition, then I wouldn't expect them to change just because of the map. Yeah, I, I Zoom can definitely get it off here as Farah. It's been done before. It'll happen again, especially with a good, uh, you know, good mercy pocket. That pharmacy combination, a classic one since day zero Overwatch. Amity opting not to preemptively run a hit skin here. They're just going to roll with that Hanzo and hope they can land those shots. Interesting. I, I like the dedication to the May, obviously really adhering to the meta on this one. Osira now, Lucio Speedway is making it possible for the Amity Spartans to get on here on first on point again. Well placed. More orb on that. Not always going to have all the oh, value no. in the world. Nice Pick pull already. up top. And yeah, a siren going to make mincemeat out of All right. That was uh, Goldfish there with perfect positioning. I believe that Stivak got the last couple shots, but really that was a good pull by him and damage from the Hanzo is really what it was. Now, rotation's on here. And this is Ludlow Falcon team entirely on here. Just a Reinhardt barrier just being absolutely abused as Okuro coming through, taking on the main tank. And this is an Amity Spartans team that is not long for this world. Right, first to point, but also first to fall. A couple alts coming in here, but it's not enough. Well, they did it. Yeah, just like that. Amity Spartan striking hard. Well placed. Moira rolled, really setting that one up. And saw Siren over there taking up a couple two pieces, you know, with Lucio's like these, these DPSs, man. These Reddit nice. Lucio's uh, the plot twist of, to any team fight. Yeah, right? And not boops either. Those were those were oh, damages. Oh, straight up you know? frags. I mean, yeah. he put in work with that sound gun there. 
straight up dragon. Yes, sir. That Sonic Amplifier gets to get it done. 17% is Nevermore does really does not have an opportunity to keep his shield up for very long in this one so far. It does have that ultimate here in just a couple seconds, a couple swings, one or the other. Oh man, he tries to get the charge in there and Goldfish shuts him down. Okiro here getting damage on himself and again, that's a, uh, that's DPS and then a healer really, really taking a task. The, other's the other side, 13, 35% will be the reward for the Amity Spartans as Lugdaw Falcons take over. I think I saw that Baptiste put down a three kill. The supports today having a very good game on their damage. Seriously. But Nevermore's shield just cannot stand up to this abuse, especially with those Sigma boulders getting thrown. He just can't get his team in here. Yeah, those accretions really getting a lot of damage, and I believe those da the damages on those were nerfed a little bit as well since Sigma's origin. Not 100% sure, but this is a Blood the Falcons team that's entirely willing to take this engagement from here. My oh my, Zoom, Stevek both getting damage on in spades as Stevek taking advantage of this Baptiste window, taking out his counterpart. I'm gonna be charging the other team just a little bit more time, right? It's not a kill-based game, it's all about that time, Bishop. Right, and Ludlow with 40%, pretty commanding lead here, but we're gonna see a couple offenses come in before they're out of time. If they can manage to stall this out, they might be able to cap. Yeah, and talking about uh, ultimate economy, right? Look at the Spartans. Oh, for sure. They've got pretty much everything they need for a good hold here. Yeah, that Arisa will take a little bit. There's a Shatter, only gonna get Okuro, but Goldfish again all over that, not to be outdone. Big boop there, Osiren taking out Okuro as he was shattered down. Now every ultimate in the game getting tossed on board, except for Zuim, he still has that, and he's looking to get these done. There it is, Ooh. take out a shield first, and then take out players. That's the goal for any well-placed fair barrage and that's the Ludlow Falcons hanging on here after literally every ultimate in the game being dropped except for Osiris gonna have that one so I'm holding that far alt till just the right moment when those shields went down and dropping it for a quick three piece that's a huge hold now there is a Lucio alt coming in here on the offense and that's the only thing that's gonna be up so it might give them an advantage here but they're gonna have to take out a lot to win this there's a sound bear as we mentioned that's the Amity Spartans no longer with advantage on that as the Siren gets super low. There's the boop though, and the flip. 99 over with a back against the wall. The Amity Spartans come back, back on top. Nice boop again though against Nosy. Zuim making him take a long walk of a short pier on that one. Desi finding value in this Ponzo already. They don't need hit scans as pulls in more. Take members of Ludlow Falcons all the way out the side. Great pull here by the Spartans. They're not gonna be getting this one up so easy. A recent pull, great way to deal with the enemy there. Uh, yep. You don't have to cut through all of that health and shield if you just pull her off. The Straight up, right? Yeah, like we said, environmental kills. <laughs> Can't res that one, Glacier, sorry to say. A lot of <laughs> ultimates coming you. up for the Ludlow Falcons as Desi getting a nice head shot on, on this one. Now, Glacier has that res here, it's coming through, but they're not going to have it for the next few seconds. Uh, just a second too late on these dragons, but Orange is getting super low. There's Zoom again, but edged out, edge, or excuse me, pushed out edgewise through there. Orange Juice is going to fall even with the bare edge corner of those barrages coming through and just a couple ultimates invested going to lead to a Ludlow Falcons W on this one. I do not believe people will be able to get, get there in time. There's a Hanzo nearby, Osiris on the Lucio trying to get there, but oh, it's still Kiro's opportunity to get a headshot on that one, shutting down the Hanzo, giving him a little bit of his own medicine. That's the first map for Ludlow there, and those Hanzo alts came in just at the perfect time to clean up. That ultimate economy coming in with only a couple percent left, and we're going to get to check out this play here. Oh, we're going back to the first point for that one. Yeah, this was, uh, this was a couple of well-placed headshots on the end there, right? Yeah, that, I remember, I remember. So that's, of course, that zoom getting... Uh, you're getting the end uh, in damage and all those, so getting the credit there and the kill fee, but that was that Hanzo getting it done, just absolutely murking. And Ludlow cleaning up the first map there pretty soon, so we're gonna, we're gonna get to see the Amnity Spartans picking the second map, which will be on Assault. Mm -hmm. And we'll get that pick here in just a second, talk a little bit about this. Uh, give me opinion here, Bishop, just overall ultimate economy both teams hit me um i mean the ludlow falcons definitely seem to have an advantage there but that might just have been due to having that position on the point for a longer period of time 
you know, you, you can use your defensive ultimates a bit more sparingly mm -hmm. because once you start cleaning up that offense, you don't need to commit more. Whereas if you're on the offensive team from the enemy Spartans, they're not having position on the point as much. You kind of need to just use them as you need them, which results in a lot more ultimates on failed push attempts. So we might see something different on the assault map if things go the other way, but definitely Ludlow using those ultimates to their advantage. We saw a lot of three kill far alts or picks on yep. important targets early in the fights. Something I definitely, definitely noticed is we really did not see a whole lot of a uh, whole lot of May blizzards, right? Yeah, I got a player named Glacier, no, but really. still no, uh, not not really any blizzards. Now there was there on Sanctum, but that was just kind of thrown out in the middle of everything, right? Yeah, and that is one of those ultimates that you do kind of expect to have a huge impact. It's a it's one of May's strengths. I mean, every character has strong ultimates, but. Blizzard really one of those that allows you to take control of an entire team fight, especially on something like control where you need to win that fight in not a long amount of time. If you keep failing your offenses, you're just not going to get anywhere. You don't get to extend the time like you do on a lot of other maps and mm -hmm. wait for a good opportunity. You have to find that ultimate, even if it's very difficult, even if people are split out, you have to get even a three, three or two man alt to break your way into that point. Yeah. Uh, very interesting controls, you know. We'll see Voskaya next. Just a point I wanted to make is just uh, super interesting about controls, right? You have an initial, you know, 50-50, I guess I'd say, in Rocket League. They're off the very, very beginning, whereas, you know, every other game type, you have an offense and a defense, everybody giving, you know, an even shtick, a nice even attempt at both sides, whereas control is just, you know, an absolute, you know, almost free-for-all for initial <laughs> control. And then I feel like a lot of the times that kind of sets the pace for the game. Right, yeah, the first cap, they're very important, but I think we're moving to a quick break now. Okay, yes, do not tune away. We'll be back here in just a couple minutes, guys.
Hello and welcome back, esports fans. We are here, EGF's Overwatch Finals. FBI Tugboat here casting with Airship Bishop down in producer's boxes. My boy Navic producing away, making our jobs just so much easier as casters. Oh, well, Sky, so next on the chopping block. Yep, we've got a one game lead for the Ludlow Falcons, and that means that Amity Spartans are the people who chose to go to Volskaya. Yes, sir. Which yes, tells sir. us a little bit about their strategy. So we saw on point one, them running that Lucio, trying to get onto the point, get that defense set up, them now moving to Volskaya, a map that is super hard to defend. Maybe they're hoping that their defensive prowess can help them take a lead. Yes, sir. I, I can guarantee you they're not picking this one randomly. Again, the map pool for these going based on game type, you know, uh, solid control, all that stuff, as is normal. But the loser will pick maps coming on into here. Again, that was Nepal first, Volskaya next, and the loser of this will pick the next one. As my boy Bishop here said, Lodo Falcons up 1-0 in this first four. Now, what I want to ask you here, Bishop, is really players that stood out, or players that stood out on either team. Ludlow Falcons over here in the blue on the left. Amity Spartans are on the right in the red. Well, zoom from Ludlow was really just putting in so much work. And I think that's to be expected as pharmacy. Your, your, your team is dedicating so many resources to you, mm -hmm. but really nothing from the Amity uh, that was even challenging him. And he kind of had free reign to just take who he wanted. But also as far as like the tactical side of things, his ultimate timing was very good. Not a lot of suicide alts. Farah, it's super risky, especially when you're fighting a Hanzo as he was every game. Uh, if you hit that ultimate at the wrong time and you eat a quick headshot, you're done. He did trade a couple kills, but he was always going positive. And it's a skill that it doesn't come naturally to a lot of players. It's such so specific to Farah. So to see him able to use that ultimate to such great effect, I think was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And the positioning there too. Like you said, it's so frequent that a barrage misplaced, mistimed can result in a self-suicide. But that was Zoom just absolutely getting it in there, as his name would imply. Sliding in very quickly into these well-placed barrage places. I mean, there was, uh, even on Sanctum, right? Uh, that inside bottom area right next to Point, not a place you frequently see barrages, at least barrages that are going to be successful. This man deleted down the shield as soon as it was gone and picked up a three-piece, if I remember right. Got a three-piece on that ultimate. Pretty critical to defending that there. But we're even seeing now interesting stuff. Uh, some Sombra on the offense. Should be mm -hmm. fun. Let's see if those EMPs pretty critical to getting in here. Oh, he trolled me. He switched to Widow. Yep. So I, I, well, it's frequent <laughs> that uh, the that the summer will be used for almost a little bit of reconnaissance mission, right? But this is, going on over to his Widowmaker, this is something we've seen him play before. Knows he's staying on that May. Again, we didn't see a whole lot of value from him last time, but there's a new game, new map, new day, basically. Yep, Widowmaker is going to make life very difficult for Farah. You can see already he's on the map. Yeah, between Goldfish down bottom, Zoom up top. Nevermore is no more. <laughs> That's not going to be a mercy res capability really either. Is see a nice little tactical pause. What we're seeing here, I'm not sure from uh, from observer standpoint, but I'm looking up above orange juice, really looking to get back around this corner. Now I really don't know if that's going to be possible for him, though, Bishop. Yeah, he's trying to get out here and survive, but it, it looks pretty dead to rights from my perspective. Yeah, yeah, not he gonna might be. See a... a May wall coming out. I don't know if that's off cooldown or not, but he might be able to give his friend some. That is some nosy. Zoom. Yeah, right, right next to him, kind of here. That would be the uh, the ideal play again. Maybe a tactical pause coming out from the end <laughs> of the partners. Do you believe these players are all playing together again at our sponsor, the UConn School of Engineering, and you call Gaming Club making this possible? Do you believe these players, these uh, stellar high school students here in the Overwatch Finals, are up there? all gaming together, you know, uh, in live, right? Pressure's on. Yeah, that's got to be a completely different experience playing on the main stage and so much pressure. Yeah. No pressure, guys, but pressure. No pressure, no pressure. Well, hey, <laughs> this is where I always, uh, I always say my typical statement, and that is, Bishop, of course, pressure makes diamonds. Ooh, that's a oh, good oh, saying. I like right? that. You like yeah, that? You like that? It's true. Almost like I'm a commentator or something like that. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I only got a few go-tos, you know, Bishop, uh, like a few anecdotes. That's definitely uh, yeah. definitely one of my favorite ones when it comes it's, to... It's rough, though, because you, 
you spend so much time thinking them up and then you use them a couple times and you don't want to sound like a broken record. You got to put them oh, away no. maybe pull them oh, out in a couple I, I, years, but no problem. sounding like a broken record and repeating it. <laughs> every single overwatch cast <laughs> name of the game. No, but, uh, 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 that, that, that is definitely one of my, uh, one of my more favorite ones. And really you can't say enough about the, you know, the land experience, right. And how that is actual pressure, how playing live is just so much different from, you know, right. playing it's... from your couch, right it's so much more exciting at the same time. Like just so much more on the line and the environment really gets to a lot of people. I've seen people pull rulers out to try and line their keyboard up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, uh, I mean, uh, you, you want to recreate to the best of your ability is that which with your, setup, that yeah. with which you are comfortable. Right. Of course. And, and also the noise in the arena and everything. A lot of times can get to, you if you're, you know, interfere with communication, yeah, and that's a good point too. We have no idea about uh, crowd status here, right? <laughs> of course, but yeah, I mean, it definitely can throw you off or just nerves in general. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think it's fair to it's fair to say that there's probably at least a few friends, a few parents, or something like that up here. Uh, you know, with with all twelve uh, all twelve players here playing together. But right. who knows? That is just theory crafting at its finest at this point, Bishop. It's nice to have some support that can help out a lot too when you're yeah, on the exactly. Spot. Well, you know, Not Bishop, I'm 27, man. I remember from... when I was going through high school, there was no such thing as support for esports. Yeah, it was rough. I'm a little bit younger, but still, this stuff really didn't start hitting it big until I was... Yeah, I hear you. Are you in college now there, Bishop? I graduated about a year ago. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's been, been a few years for me as well. Man, good um, stuff. And it, what it, man, I feel like I went through at the wrong time, you know? I was out here trying to get good at Halo 2 and, uh, <laughs> and and being forced to, you know, lie to girls and my friends about what I was doing that weekend when I just want to stay in and grind 2v2s and stuff, but, uh, you know, for fear of being made fun of, right? Right. Yeah, these young kids, such an advantage. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, a little bit of uh, te uh, technical issues, not the infamous L word, no lag here, <laughs> but uh, these players, these teams just getting squared away. We'll be going to a short break and we'll be right back with you guys. Please do not tune away. And I told you it was just going to be a couple minutes. We are back. We are live here starting in just a second. Amity Spartans here on the right. The red and Ludlow Falcons over here in left in the blue. Risa does slide around that corner uncontested. Yeah, no uh, no wall invested, right? Right, yeah. Ludlow not deciding to uh, do what every public game team decides to do and just chase right back to the spawn. They're smarter than that. They know when to back up. Yeah, uh, this is a coordinating, communicating team. Uh, you'll not see, you'll not catch Lobel Falcons off, uh, off kilter like that so easily. And Desi from Amity really looking to find just a single pick here to open things up. If he can take out Hanzo or maybe even the Farah, it just gives his team so much space. Yeah, oh! Interesting decision to stay with Desi, right? It looks like this is a Amity Spartans team that's doing a decent job of rotating around here, but I don't think Desi's really gotten a whole lot of advantage in edgewise. And here comes the corner shots, but all over to Stivek. Calling that out like a 
What, uh, what's that famous investigator? Oh, here comes the barrage and shutting it down with the shatter. Nevermore continuing to get these graced one ins here. Now, this looks like the Ambient Spartans have lost, but at least they got, what, one, two, three ultimates out of, uh, the Falcons? Between yeah, the barrage. Quite a few. Uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, Okuru's and, uh, and the Sigma ultimate. Yeah, right now they're down to just that Arisa and the, uh, the Hanzo ultimate here for the next defense, but Lab Bunky on the Mercy with the only offensive all available, so I don't know if it's really going to matter too much. Everyone's going to have to charge back up. We could see a Mayalt coming in, only like 15%-ish left on that one to charge, but mm -hmm. I think they're still going to just be looking for Desi to find that pick and not commit too much. Yeah, that's a that's a one or two shot hit by Nosy to have that Lizard on board, but the pull and more... Okuru getting it done here again. Glacier, Glacier, excuse me, has really been hitting these uh, these damage boosts when it's necessary. You throw a Stavek supercharger on top, you're gonna have a bad day. Spartans trapped in the spawn. Desi here deciding to switch on to Fara, maybe try something a little different and match the pharmacy and just decimate everyone on the ground instead of trying to pick their opponent. Exactly. Mostly just uh, kind of damage exchange here. Both of these, uh, both of these teams, kind of posturing as Nevermore is up close and personal. I mean, he he's been good with the position, oh, but no. I really just feel like Nevermore has not really been, uh, you know, supported in the right fashions. You know, healing wise, well, not so much healing wise. Honestly, the healers have been there, but really, whenever he gets these shatters down, whenever he gets a good position to hit him, just the DPS on his team just not really there, not in position to to take advantage. Yeah, by the time those shatters are coming down, there just isn't enough follow-up. Even there, we saw Desi almost in position, but then getting dropped by Goldfish's arrow. And if Amity can't find a way to both counter the opponent's Fara and give themselves a little space, they're not going to find us. But they did get Goldfish just there. Speaking of space, the Goldfish, Goldfish NOQ. Oh, no! Snark has eaten the nosy blizzard. Not going to get cold here today. Is Zoom picking up another two-piece. This guy in his barrage is just... Crazy stuff, a siren falling as well place to vex shots. The res did come through and with only nine seconds to go here. Not sure how much longer the Spartans are gonna be able to live through this one. The Mercy Ultimate comes out and Lud uh, uh, Lab Monkey is doing a great job days, on though. this one. Just barely getting away from it is nosy. Freeze coming in, Lab Monkey not able to get it done himself. Rock and never rock more shatter it. available. He's in here now. Yep, there's the Maywall down. He's only got to get through one more shield, and that'll be it. Oh, Out, no. but Sigma blocks it. Well-placed shield on that one, and the mobile shield from the Sigma provides value yet again. Desi coming back very quickly with a Doomfist. Looked like it was uh, that, that was a good start to it. Try for the spin to win. Not going to happen, though. The Lucio was there as well, but Orange Juice over on the Hammond just a little bit too late. Yeah, so much juice there at the end for Man these Spartans. I would have loved to see that much aggression earlier on, but yeah. maybe just spending a little bit too much time waiting to find those picks. Couldn't quite get on point. We're going to see them on defense here, and they might be able to tie it up, but it, it's going to be a pretty difficult hold. That first point on Volskaya is not easy if you want to fully defend it. Yeah, not uh, not easy for anybody, especially now with their back, backs up against the wall. This is a Ludlow Falcons team that only needs to take one tick, right? Yeah, I mean, you basically can't wipe at all. If you go down, that point's gone. So we're going to have to see a pretty righteous defense here if they want to take this to a tie. And that's the thing is they can't even win this map at this point. The best mm -hmm. they can hope for is a tie. Yeah, and not, not an ideal situation here for the Spartans. And I got to say, I, I believe you have casted some of this Overwatch here for the EGF in the season, but I've seen this matchup before. You know, the, the Ludlow Falcons is not a bad team by any means, but... Normally, this has been a little bit more even. Spartans are not a bad team in themselves either by any way, shape, form, or measure, my man. And right now, Volskaya, this is the map they picked. And this is really not working out for them. Yeah, I mean, they've come this far, but if they can't pick up a win on home field advantage, it's, it's going to be difficult for them to find anything else. Some interesting picks coming out from the offense, though. Might mix things up here, change the game. I'm not against it. Uh, this is the Falcons that have, I mean, they have, what, four minutes of playtime, right? The worst thing that can happen is they get a tie on this one. Um, now, looks like they're going back to pretty much the same. Glacier on the Anna. I was wondering if they were going to keep with this, and it does look like they are. And with the Reaper, that's going to make for some nasty uh, Nano Boost uh, options, right? Nano Boosted uh, Death Blossom, never a force. And they did swap out here for Sigma, so they're running Sigma Risa that might 
help them a little bit. I know that Reinhardt was getting abused in the previous rounds, but we'll have to see how. Glacier got super low before that headshot. Knows he actually didn't even need to tap that on the nose because that was a Glacier aim that was super, super low. So, so far, Falcon's offense, nothing doing, no advantage gained. Really, really, the Spartans taking them a task here. Might be actually nasty, a couple nasty staggers. Pushing up a little far here. They, if they get picked, they might be in for a bad time. But it looks like they're going to clean it up and move out. Yeah, uh, Lab Monkey staying up top. That's uh, that's uh, aggressive. That is that is very, very uh, ostentatious, Boys. you could say, for a, for a $5 word. Because uh, if Lab Monkey falls here with no res and only Osiren to provide healing so otherwise, heal? yeah, that's, that's hard. Uh, yeah. Very defensive hold here, though. Not even really trying to contest the choke and completely content to just fight in the open on the... Schnark is definitely going to be looking for this mercy, but the, the pull there was fantastically placed. That's Sivak, who's continuing on the, the Arissa. Dragon's out, is going to take out Okiru on this one. Sivak following suit as the supercharger does fall. So that looks like that's a... Uh, yeah, that was a nosy... Uh, 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 Hanzo ult that got it oh, done, man. man. Just like that, flipping it back around and changing the script, man. This is Lothal Falcons, they're able to make gold from nothing, just like that. Two minutes yep. in, one tick, well, Sky goes their way. That's the second map, and that flex pick from uh, Schnark onto that Roadhog to immediately just get in around those shields, find a hook, and take him out was pretty impressive to just so effortlessly swap to that and get work. A lot to be said for flex picks, right? And this this is Overwatch. This is not Dota. This is oh, not League of course. Legends. Once you uh, once you pick a character, you can switch it at any given time as long as you're back in that respawn room. Uh, and that was really a fantastic flex by Schnark there. Uh, I do not believe I've seen him play Roadhog very much in other games. Generally, you know, it, you know sticking to obviously other heroes. So zoom there exactly with 69 percent. Kill participation, man to oh man. That's quite high. And uh, Ludlow here taking map two again. Amnity going to be picked. It will be an escort map. Yeah, but we'll get uh, we'll get which one that is here in just a just a second. Um, man, uh, the, only so much to say about that one. It's very very quick. We'll sky around on that. First to throw in this, Ludlow Falcon, just like that up two on the series. Um, I I know that the Amity Spartans are capable of putting up a much better fight and even winning some w winning not just consecutive team fights, but winning maps, putting a points up. Of course. You know? And I just that Volskaya map is just not indicative of very promising things to come. You know, they had the opportunity to pick the map and then a just quick and just reporting the news here, not getting any progress even on first point. I, I really hope the enemy Spartans are able to take a next map and make it a much, much better and more competitive. Oh, I think your mic cut out on us there, friend. Oh, I, I, I was saying that I, I hope that, uh, that this is a, uh, that this is a Amity Spartans team that is able to pick the next map and get a lot more progress than they did on the previous after just reporting the news, no progress on Volskaya whatsoever. And Amity has picked King's Row for their next map. Another classic uh, defensive stronghold that if you're if you're a team's strength is defense, that's what you want to pick. But they didn't really have a whole lot of success on King's Row. Of course, at the very least, we get to see a nice winter-themed version of King's Row here for the holidays. Yeah, I do, I do like King's Row a lot. I do like King's Row a lot. I think everybody does, right? It could be a super hard map to win, and I, I really enjoy playing it because of that. You, you know, it's not guaranteed. You're not often going to go to an overtime round or anything like that. Like, you, It's more likely than not that you aren't going to get to the end. So if a team can prove that they are capable of that, it, it can show their offensive prowess. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, what, King's Row has been here since day one, man. I think everybody likes King's Row, and everybody has since... You know, since day one, I'm talking about a little bit of what, like Overwatch League, like uh, history here, right? It was sure for with the wait, was it sure for? I think it was sure for with the with the wonkiness here, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Season one. I don't know if I can recall that. So, so what? It was a uh, very, very low. Gladiators had to take 
first it was the second round you know the over overtime round they had to take first tick or whatever and he actually kind of like faked like he was afk for a second switched to widow jumped up top took out a quick two-piece while i believe it was the other la team i believe it was the valiant uh work were, were caught on wares you know especially in a time when mobile bears were not a thing you know, you got your Winston, <laughs> right. you know, you got your, you got your, your, your Reinhardt's and outside of projected barriers, Azaria and stuff like that. That was pretty much it, my friend. And so he came up there, took himself a couple two pieces or a couple of headshots on there, a couple of two pieces onto, uh, onto tanks and flipped the script really, really changed the progress of the game. The gladiators were able to take that, uh, take that progress. Kings row super linear, but if you do manage to find those flanks, it's hard to get behind somebody, but if you do, it's all that more juicy. People don't expect. I'm sorry. You said all, all the all the more juicy was the second part. Uh, just because people don't expect it, because you're so used on King's Road to just focusing all of your fire down that choke point. And I like the aggression that offensive teams can get here. You know, you, I, it's very very frequent that you see first point taken. And then you see, you know, sometimes a Lucio speed boost and speed boost enabled team just charging up the front, given that that second spawn is just so much farther away, you know, uh, taking out those staggers has resulted in a lot of offensive progress gone through, especially once you get under that, uh, under the overhang, I guess it's not really like a bridge, but that first little point, because uh, like you were saying, a lot of damage can be funneled through there. Getting past there really is going to be the name of the game after taking first point. Yeah, you really do have to open things up. And it's something here that might help Falcons a lot if they've been relying on that Farah Zoom putting in a ton of work on every map thus far. And King's Row, not maybe the best far map ever, but definitely one of her stronger maps. Yeah, uh, a good Farah is indicative of their ability to make it work on any map, right? Right. Uh, you yeah, know, if you're relying thing on we're it, talking you've got to be flexible. Yeah, Sanctum, we were talking about how, you know, there's a lot of open space and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of aerial coverage that a Farrah can go, but really not a whole lot in the way of cover up there once you get up you know, mm -hmm. beyond just, uh, you know, tank height with, you know. Right. Uh, beyond that, there's really, really not a whole lot to, a whole lot of places to go, a whole lot of places to take cover from, especially if you're looking at hit scans down bottom. Now, hit scans, talk to me about that. We really haven't seen a whole lot of them, right? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, the closest thing to a hit scan that I think we've seen is like Baptiste. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, I, I guess you, you, you hear hit scans, you always think about right. DPS characters, but you're 100 percent right that Baptiste really has been the only, uh, only, only hit scan, uh, only hit scans come through here so far. We saw a little bit of Desi's Widow, but it, I don't think it really got a whole That's lot true. of work yeah, done, yeah. and they swapped off it again. I mean, the the meta we're in right now with all of these shields, it's so hard to find those openings. So people kind of just relying on other ways to put damage out that aren't going to be affected by that yeah as much and especially what uh well, we, we saw the king himself big boss pine resign you know what two three weeks ago no longer playing in the overwatch league just gonna be streaming and stuff i mean like literally i am not like being dramatic here literally one of the best hit scan players in the entire world but you know the way that overwatch is going the necessity for having a hit scan like that especially in this double shield meta where it you know doesn't matter how quickly the shots that get there in fact generally your projectiles in this game are going to be doing more damage than your individual hit scan shots right so it's more so going to be about that shield waste and destroying those and destroying them quickly than getting accurate pinpoint hit scan shots in effectively right being able to just put out so much damage that people start dropping from the area of effect or coming in with things like may that we've seen become super popular recently in the past couple months and years is just the crowd control and things like Sigma 2, being able to just chuck a boulder at somebody. I don't care if you got a shield. I threw a boulder at you. Do it. <laughs> exactly, right? Uh, and I mean, his initial shots, the little two-piece, going to be so much more effective for taking down these shields. But you're right, man. Once that is gone, that rock can come in. It can stun multiple people. And you know, then he's got his eat. He can, just like we saw earlier, right? We were talking about not seeing uh, blizzards that much. Knows he comes through here and uh, sends that blizzard, that little bot, sets off the blizzard whatever right into posing sigma i do believe that was steve stevek on that um no wait no that was yeah nosy over to stevek these teams have uh have actually switched now we have the amity spartans over here on the left in the blue ludlow falcons over here on the right in the red 
Mm -hmm. And looks like Orange Juice and Nevermore changing their tank comp back to what they've been running the majority of the game. And it hasn't been working for them too well, but I do think that this is one of those maps, King's Row, where you really can get a lot of work out of Reinhardt. So I'd like to see him make this effective, get some good shatters in, and put in some work. Yeah, we've seen some nutty Reinhardt play already in these first two maps. I have no reason to believe it'll stop anytime soon. Through Chokehold, is this Ludlow Falcons team? Got our Reaper over on the side, applying pressure, and that was a really, really well-placed Fire Strike on that. Again, Nevermore, almost right up to about 50% charge. charge coming in. My, oh my, does get pre punished for his aggression on that, but still, what it came out beforehand was so much value. Yeah, a little bit too aggro there. May, this zoom on this May, just flexing so hard, separating these tanks up, freezing them, and looks like they're gonna slam onto this first point pretty effortlessly. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, definitely more of a fight coming in the beginning, but Ludlow Falcons coming through, and again, very, very definitive and effective first push. Now, we might be getting to see what I called a minute ago, and these offensive teams getting very aggressive against defense, trying to take some staggers. Zarya very charged, just putting in work, zoning off the defense here. They're taking such an aggressive stance and just leaving their may or the, sorry they're Anna all alone to cap this you know the long range shielding will be capable but oq is not uh he's not on the other side of this not even in los yet he's barely yeah, exactly. peeking in now <laughs> now it is now zoom getting a couple of those and finding value from me here comes the coalescence at the top the shatter Sanders getting it done nevermore no shatter possibilities after getting all the attention and even more of the damage in this world of overwatch sends desi both picking up themselves picks here is the Looks like the, yeah, that was the healing composition. That was the Anna and the Zoom May getting the payload a little bit farther. So under that uh, under that overhang really is a good first push. And all the shatters still available here, but not too sure how they're going to be able to get these off when they're both fighting Mays. Like, you just, as soon as you drop that shield, you're just frozen up. Yep, exactly. Here comes Speaking the all frozen. Mays. Here goes Nosy up first. There's dragons for support. Shatter is down and gets a lot of the members of the Amity Spartans. My, oh my. Was that a two ultimate? No, I guess that was technically a three ultimate investment, right? Ah, uh, yes. They use the Ana, the Reinhardt, and the Lucio. But Ludlow here just cleaning him up. I mean, a huge Reinhardt ultimate. Really, really was. Uh, I, I mean, yes, it was an investment. Yes, it was half a team. But taking out a full team wipe like that and getting members damage on to, you know, go working on their next uh, next stage of ultimates, maybe the name of the game. Getting aggressive here as the Spartans now is looking to freeze things up, slow them down. Zoom getting that one out here as Nosy has counterpart falling. Goldfish Glacier both finding themselves big picks here as Desi left out in the lurch. Pushed all the way up. A minute and a half will be the reward. Zoom providing so much tempo with that alt there from May, just completely obliterating his opponents, giving them so much space and a free cap on that second point. I like uh, Singe, very smart, just going off the side, did not want to get staggered there, and as the Moira will be able to get back up with his team pretty, pretty quickly. That fade get you where you need to go. Now, here from Desi, maybe pressure. looking for a pick on this May. There's a glowing no reaper, stuff that nightmares are made out of. The shatter comes down, isn't able to connect on there. That's never more falling after Stevak gets that down. Jesse trying to get aggressive, not going to happen. Goldfish with the death blossom and taking out a three piece on that. Zoom taking one of his own. And this is a Ludlow Falcon team going to be flying on into last point. Yeah, they, they graviton death blossom. There's, there's not a whole lot you can do about that at that point. <laughs> Uh, no Zenyatta is available to immune your team. But decisive aggression there with so much time on the clock. Three minutes and 57 seconds. Yeah, that really is the, I mean, forever in a day. If this goes to overtime, this will be a Ludlow Falcons team that is uh, going to be in very, very good position. Four minutes, uh, even if, you know, again, the Spartans take a whole, even if they take more time than that, that's all the time in the world to play with in our overtime rounds if we do get there. Now, enemy Spartans on attack. We'll be seeing how they do here on King's Row, the classic crowd favorite.
wonder if we'll see any changes in composition here if it's just going to be a May fight again for this first. Ready for battle. I would like to see the, uh, what, I mean, Desi, uh, Desi playing that, what, the, the Widowmaker, excuse me, I forgot the name for a second. Mm -hmm. The Widowmaker on last one, wouldn't be surprised if he pops up top and gets that, uh, tries to, you know, pop a couple heads. Of course, it's not going to be an easy decision. Given that they'll be, mm -hmm. they, they can pretty much guarantee that they're going to be going up against double shield. Now, what they do not know is that Shnark is playing the Zarya. Yeah, it does leave you a bit more open to get headshot. Like, moving in as a Widowmaker against two shields is almost impossible, but one shield, you might be able to make it work. Uh, the only downside to this, though, is that Amnity Spartans would just be putting so much of their resources into one person. If Desi can't find those headshots, he's not going to get anything done. So it looks like they're going to just stick with the... Symmetric here. Oh, I know what's going a little on weird. Here. I know what's going on. A little cheesy, just a little cheesy, maybe. And they're utilizing the Osiren speed boost and gonna get Desi's teleporter off. To right over the there top. There you go. Right on top and falling down like rain and death from above. Nasty charge against Nevermore. That's just terrible luck for him as he lands exactly in the wrong position. Now that is gonna be a goldfish take off the top with no mercy to res through. I mean, Reapers aren't that fast, right? I guess they do have two different movement abilities. <laughs> it feels that way when he's chasing you, doesn't it? Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And the life steal back on every single shot. I've been right. there before. Yeah. But a, a very cheeky attempt there to get in, and they did manage to get onto the point, but unfortunately couldn't quite clean it up. Desi switching over to Farah here, running a, a quick pharmacy to try and get some height advantage on this point. Nothing really from their opponents to counter this. Falcons, no hit scan. No, I'm with it. I'm with it. Uh, I like what the Spartans are doing. First uh, aerial attempt by sending literal team. You know, all six players up in the top to float down. Now Desi, a little bit of a different aerial pressure, trying to find an advantage from that vertical positioning. Nothing doing so far, though, Bishop. Nope, not quite enough of what they need to get onto this point. They're building up a couple ultimates. They might be able to move in with that. They did eat a Reinhardt hammer on their last push from their opponents, so giving them a bit more space to work with. Nothing quite yet sticking here for the offense. Great play wall right here. Just completely negating out Okuru's Baptiste wall. And as I say that, no, I'm, no he's not. Dusty feeling the front end, the fire end of that window and how how nosy. Falling on this and a nasty charge as well. Man, oh man, Stavak is getting it going just as much as Nevermore was on the side of the Spartans, man. Yeah, it's very rough to be a Reinhardt in these these days and ages. Just it's hard out here for the main tank. Oh yeah, it's rough. <laughs> but minute and fifty left on the clock. They do have this far ultimate available. Might be able to get in over the top here, find something cheeky. They've oh. shown themselves open to cheese in the past. Man, oh man, Osiren trying to do the right thing, get in there with further res, follow up orange juice, but just like that, losing two, you're going to be charged another, what, 15, 20 seconds? Yeah, uh, really running out of time here to get these pushes in, but they might be waiting for orange juice's ultimate, and if they can get a, a Graviton in here on the offense and follow that up with the Farah, it might be enough to just drop the entire team. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, almost uh, getting picked open. What, the, the grab in the middle, you throw a, uh, a barrage on top and just make sure the zooms Maywall is not there or just gets the lead down quickly, and there's nothing on the side of the Ludlow Falcons. Even with the sound barrier, they'll be able to get that negated. Here comes the Death Blossom. Attempted shatter and Nevermore just barely whips it over on the side. Goldfish lives through that and big one onto the Zarya tank. Follows up with a headshot on Nevermore and this is a Spartans team this is just, man, I feel like everything that they have tried, nothing doing, man. It, it, it's like hitting a brick wall for them and Snack yeah. there just such a clutch shield on his Reaper to protect him from the Graviton yep. and keep that Death Blossom running. 30 seconds on the clock. This is probably the oh, last hit goodness. that he's got. Already yeah, the down damage one. Damage boosted uh, fire strike on that. Taking Nosy out of this one for the time being. 20 seconds to go. Yes, they don't have time to wait around for him. As Nosy does have that blizzard and he'll be seeing this one soon, but he's just now coming back from spawn. Now getting in edgewise. There's the grab. There's the Barrage, the sound barrier getting it done, but OQ not able to lift through it. Shots onto Singe and makes him no more as the Blizzard now there, but it's just Nosy Desi on point. Nevermore has come back, but I'm not sure if he's able to get there in time. Nosy 
going up top of his Maywell on that one, and that's gonna spell no more for Desi, man. He was there, he got the damage in, but without the support of his healers, makes quick work of that one. No point captured here for the Spartans as the Amity, or excuse me, as the Ludlow Falcons go up 3-0 in this best of four, or first to four. Yeah, Amity with their backs up against the wall here. Uh, they're really gonna have to pull it out if they wanna win this. That was a huge shatter we saw earlier. Tight hallway like that. If you can find something, there's, there's nowhere. Well, I mean, you called it earlier, right? The, that narrow corridor and all the damage in the world coming through there. The Baptistes, that, those, the, with the windows just made that so much more possible. All the damage coming through there. I mean, you're talking about increasing it that much. That's a fire strike that'll, that is literally lethal to everybody at 200, right? Yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do once you're on the ground like that in the tight yeah. corner. Especially with the range, you throw in some swings as well. Reinhardt putting in a lot of work. So we're moving on what, for, yep. to what could be the last game in the series. We'll be getting our map picks here in just a second as well. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't feel like as, I mean, this is a Lodal Falcons team. Stavek has been now, I think, playing up to Nevermore. I, I really got to say, this Nevermore Ryan on the side of the Spartans has been really, really getting it done. Like, he's been getting aggressive, not dying just, like, right off the rip because his charges are not just the... His charges are not the ones you'll see in, in your uh, you know, your pickup games, right? Your random comp <laughs> games. Yeah. Uh, you can pain. tell they're coordinated. A lot of times there's a bubble involved as well. Uh, but... Again, Nevermore, once he gets that position, even if he gets a nasty shatter down, just the Amity Spartans, not everybody is there, or there's not at least not enough to have that much value from it. Yeah, it's so hard. I mean, you have to you have to put in so much overtime work as Reinhardt to really have an impact in this meta, and it's just not quite there. He's almost there. We've seen a couple of good charges. We've seen a, a couple of good shatters, but somehow it always manages to get punished. And I'm not sure if it's like a shield, if he needs more shield support from his second tank, or if it's just the defense from Falcons is too quick that they just react so quickly to his his aggression yeah. that he gets shut down. But um, they 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 tried some other comps. They tried out the Sigma. It didn't really work for them. I think they're going to be sticking to this for the remainder of the series, and hopefully he can figure out that little secret sauce that he needs to get his to get his impact going. Mm. I, and some of the times I feel like it's almost like uh, you never more goes in there and it seems like he's just getting so aggressive that maybe these, you know, teammates are almost like writing him off, but he gets there, he gets the damage in, he gets these shatters on. What it was Sanctum, I think that he got on the other side of the Orisa shield, got the shatter down. That was like five players like they were down there. You know, he was just out there by himself afterwards. So the remaining DPS was able to take him out, I do believe. And it would make sense. That was the, the fair on the other side. You know, the, the zoom yeah, on, the, sure. on the Falcons flying up above, getting those direct rocket shots in. Uh, but laying five members down, that's, I mean, that's a great investment. In one ultimate. Now, Junkertown next. Bastion, is he good? We may find out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I gotta say, I've uh, I've played enough Junkertown, watched enough Junkertown that would not be surprised whatsoever if we do see the Bastion. Now, of course, you throw a Baptiste in there, you throw double shields, throw something like a May, as well as uh, I mean, really, your 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 sixth player, your your other DPS. I mean, pretty, at that point, it has to be your Bastion. You can definitely line it up all the way. And Junkertown is I mean, a really really good place for it. Almost all the sidelines, except for on second point, or at least certain parts are just so, so lax when it comes to Bastions, right? Like, like it really, really works for them. Oh, yeah. If you're just pirate shipping your way in there and you don't fall off the cart, you're going all the way to the third point. I mean, it really changes the game on people. It changes up everything you know about Overwatch is now a lie. Like, there's this Bastion. <laughs> He's good for some reason. I keep dying. Our shields are just being eviscerated. Yeah. But we may not see it. We may be getting a little, I may be getting a little overexcited. I just like Bastion a lot. This is the only map that he's vaguely threatening on. So I have to try to rep him, but you never know. Uh, Spartans have shown themselves open to a little bit of, you know, trickery, a little bit of cheese. We saw that fun Symmetra teleporter on the first yeah, point yeah. there to get in above the opponent. And they might be willing to put all their eggs in one basket to try to take this game out on something. That's maybe a little bit less orthodox, even if it is popular on Trunk Account. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the things I feel like 
if you go with a normal comp off the beginning, then it's not really something you can switch to unless it's a complete oh, no. hoodwink on on point two, right? Like, and, and unless you just have wholesale right. swaps on point two, and the op opposing team wouldn't you know catch it, wouldn't see it, has no indication that it's coming. Right. Other than that, you pretty much have to start with it and then just change once you get your once Ben Sebastian comes off, because any team worth our salt once they realize it is they're not going to let the Bastion on two payload. <laughs> period. And once they do, then they have effectively lost. Of yeah, if if you aren't. If you get your Bastion off at any point, if he's not on the pirate ship, it becomes very difficult to get back on the ship. You know, the train only moves in one direction. So uh, another thing about that Bastion comp, and especially the double shield meta that some people don't think about as much, is the way that it denies you so much alt charge. Because you aren't actually able to get damage onto anyone. He's, oh, yeah. Bastion is just so protected that... Uh, you might be like, oh, well, we'll just, you know, charge up a May alt or we'll charge up, you know, a Graviton or some, just anything to get him off this cart. And you end up being at the third point with 70% alt charge and you just lose. I mean, your, your healers have a lot. Your mate, your, uh, your Mercy probably has full alt charge because she's mm -hmm. been pumping healing out, trying to keep people up. But uh, you kind of have to rely on your basic ability skill set and your positioning as a team to really hit him and get him off at that point. Yeah, that's such a good point, Bishop. Uh, I, I feel like it's frequent, especially uh, you know maybe some of my games, some of my you know my lower SR games. That is just like, oh well, Bastion's there. Let's pull a Roadhog. But now you know you have these double shields. Not only do you have to burn all the way through there, and now Roadhog is better now with his six shot in the scrap gun right. to be able to get these shields down. But then you throw a May in there, who's worth her salt, especially at some of these higher levels. I can guarantee you, a lot of these players are at coming through here for the finals of the EGF. You know they didn't get here by chance. And now you have a May who's super responsive. So you're talking about getting that May wall on the other side and thereby completely negating a hook, even if it does land through two shields. You're looking at just making these bastions just so much more just invulnerable, you know? Then you throw a Baptiste in there who can actually get the, the invulnerability field in there. Really, you're going to make for a, for a tough, uh, a tough uh, composition to break, you know? Yeah, it could be tough, but I'd also like to see Desi maybe commit to the Widowmaker here. Junker Town, definitely a map where that can I'd work. I love that. Especially the first point, so open, so many jump shot opportunities, so many weird angles that you can come from to get around those shields that you don't have as much of an opportunity on other points. And if there's anything that's going to let them get in on this map and take a victory, it's going to need to be a standout player. Yeah, a standout play. That's, a, that's such a that is such good phrasing, Bishop. Somebody uh, outside of Nevermore, in my opinion, on the Spartans, needs to come through here and start popping heads. If it is Desi, and we've seen him do it before in previous rounds, maybe it's just the pressure here of the land situation, but we only saw him briefly play that Widowmaker, and I do think he got a little bit of value from it, but was forced to switch off based on the composition the Falcons were running at the time. Um, mm -hmm. Long sidelines on point one, especially if Amity Spartans are on defense for uh, first round of here in Junkertown, which again, might be their last shot. Well, this is their last no, shot. This me. is. If, if they yeah. lose any games at this point, a, a tie will let them obviously, you know, extend and keep going on. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we're going to see a tie on this map unless neither team touches the cart, which seems unlikely, yeah. given that it's Junker Town. If you can't get on the cart on Junker Town, you got some problems. Well, I, I guess the, the tie open. possibility, or excuse me, go ahead. Yeah, there's, there's a 1%, there's a now probably less than that chance that this would end in a tie. Well, but the, again, I, Going it, it further can happen because if, uh, if both teams take an overtime, right? Oh yeah, right. <laughs> so they take, either take an overtime <laughs> no or they ties. push into they push into first point or second point in an overtime, and then once the payload moves through right. its little animation, then it doesn't move at all either. But uh, I do believe it is mm -hmm. impossible to land on the same you know point Pixel, zero 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 yeah. one meter. Yeah, I've never seen that at least. Um, so they, they're maybe gonna have to win here yeah. if they want to they want to extend their their championship run here and they're going to need to pull out a win yes giving up exactly. anything at this point is going to end this year yes sir this is the amity spartans looking at forcing the full cinderella story the full reverse sweep <laughs> if they do desire to maintain some of this uh so i believe do you believe it's scholarship money we'll get exact numbers on who will be getting what depending on winnings and whatnot but do you believe that's one thousand dollars in sponsor in uh, scholarship money excuse me to uconn that's university of connecticut not a bad haul, if I Not say so myself. Not a bad haul myself. at all. Maybe this Love Thou Falcons. Mm -hmm. Goldfish here. 
giving me that bastion that I wanted to see. They're going to be coming in here with the pirate ship. And not a great composition to fight it, honestly. I mean, if I was the Spartans, that's not what I'd want to be picking yeah. if I was fighting a bastion. Their best shot you have really the is Mosey as the, uh, as the May getting the wall up under the bastion and then allowing for Desi and more to pour in damage. But so far, not happening. Goldfish really kind of fighting to try and get on top of this point. Actually just opting to get, stay on the side. Zoom taking out his counterpart. Nice headshot against Desi. Now Team Spartans fighting one down. No more vulnerability shield for them as Singe falls. Zoom continuing on with these headshots. Shinar Goldfish making mincemeat and short work of the rest of the Spartans. Do believe this is the Ludlow Falcons to be rewarded on first point. Yep, and an interesting Maywall there. Uh, you saw Nosy just popping him up over the shield, which was really cute. Unfortunately, uh, only the Arisa and the Reinhardt left to try and take him out at that point, just ended up feeding him an all. The effort was there. I liked it. It was clean. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't quite work out for them, and we now have a Mercy damage boosting him coming in on this next point. Yeah, and the goldfish already at ultimate. I mean, like you said, 450 for Arisa, 900 or 500 on the on the Reinhardt. That's 950 damage to be that ultimate all day. Dragons out here first, never more up front as is his position. But all the damage and attention in the world makes short work of that main tank. This is a this Falcons team just flying on in towards second point. Five minutes in the clock. Yeah, that's a lot of time to work with. Some flanking here from Desi, unfortunately not able to find Reinhardt or. Uh, Excuse me, Bastion's weak point there. He took him down to maybe half health and now losing a duel. Man, man, oh man. Uh, Nevermore getting it closer and closer to that ultimate. Uh, pretty much a team wipe against the Spartans. Uh, and I believe Schnark is the only one who has fallen. Glacier was all over with that with a res. Six minutes coming at second point. A lot of alts from the offense here. Love those Falcons. They have. The Bastion, the, the Mercy, and the Arisa all available. So much bonus damage that could be coming into this gun. And they do have a Baptiste alt on uh, on the opposing side, on the defense from the Spartans, to try and deal with that. And 5% more until they get their Reinhardt. I just don't know if it'll be enough to get him off of this cart. They all, available, they all available here now, too. There's Baptiste window. Gonna start at first. Nevermore with a good shot there. That's a fire strike providing value all day and there you go striking back knew it had him in him and that was the amity spartans proving it all but a team wipe here is that's exactly uh yeah is. zoom getting well uh, yeah decently staggered out a few seconds they'll have to wait for him for you know just a second or two nosy dropping that almost as soon as he found it just throwing that mail down yep. a huge freeze enables them to hold that point but we've got five count it five ultimates from the falcons here on the offense so they, they might be willing to just come in and drop it like it's yeah, I mean, and uh, if, if it works, it makes sense on that. Zoom, the only one not close, but those junk rat balls already getting him out up to 60%. That tire will not do any favors for the Spartans. Their defenses, the shatter comes out, but I do not believe that that one landed, Bishop. Just like that, those singe getting all the value from this coalescence. Man, oh man, you don't see uh, you don't see Moira's doing that that often. Yeah, that was a very, very clean defense. Uh, just what, three, super clean. Three just from him, I think? Swiped it up. Yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of work from supports today, honestly. Proving yeah, once again that supports do deal damage, guys. You can't they ignore do. them. They can, uh, they can get it done even though it's not goats anymore. A lot of damage and attention coming on to Schnark there. There's the Sigma ultimate just immediately afterwards. Zoom again, finding this main tank and finding all the value in the world from that DPS position. Two piece from him. Nice tire exploding tire just as soon as it comes out. And now Okuru does fall there, but it looks like this defense will be playing off the back foot for right now. Mm, they've, they've seemed to have reestablished themselves on the cart, going to try and get Bastion running in from the backside making it back onto this point with his buddy, Arisa, ready to aim up and try to clean up. Goldfish looking like he's kind of not really 100% sure where he wants to set up he's at. Not it committed. makes sense he's not just fine to go anywhere. Payload, yeah, now shooting through window. Now there's a window of their own. Two of them count him as Baptiste, both pull ultimates. Nice wall here, it looks like Singe getting more on in there. Orange Juice taking out his counterpart. Rez coming through though. Glacier all over that one has been very, very effective in positioning on getting these reses out consistently. Now three minutes to go as we're looking at about 10 meters away. Desi trying to get away, super low for him, not 
Gonna be able to get ultimate before that comes out. Nosy now with the blizzard out, trying to freeze him out. Not gonna happen. Two minutes 55 for the side of the Ludlow Falcons. My oh my, that's time all day, Bishop. Yeah, that that's a rough pace to beat. Uh, you really gotta move quick to get that sort of a time. And judging on what we've saw on the past games, uh, it's gonna be rough for them to match. Yeah, I mean, coming into third point with six minutes, uh, I, I got to say it's a yeah. great job by the Spartans. Burning three minutes on third point, that, that's not an easy task by any means. Uh, oh, of course, e the Spartans even if... did find it there, but not not quite enough to stop them. But that is a lot of time that they've bought themselves. They, they've made the retake here possible, uh, which would have been, you know, maybe not if, if they hadn't found that time. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be – they're going to have to really dig deep if they're going to take – I mean, what, something like six minutes, even if that was just a standard, oh, yeah. you know, like 45 seconds, which would have been kind of on par with their previous progress going in through first and second points for the Falcons. Uh, cutting that down a, literally less than half, that really, really has bought them, oh, like yeah. you said, they've, a lot of yardage, a lot of uh, got a, a lot of more room to play with, you know. Ashton's coming out from both teams here. Goldfish versus Nosy, who will win in the, the duel of Bastion. We'll find out. Yes, yes. <clears throat> it'll, be, it'll be very interesting here the positioning for the defensive bastion just so much more uh, uh, really prominent is really gonna decide this one so much more because you know where the offensive bastion is going yeah, yeah. he's on or right next to the point every time although yeah. we did see goldfish stick some weird spots for his transform especially in that last uh the last push he kind of mm -hmm. just found his way into the window and stuck it but it looks like they're gonna hold really close up here down bottom Super low is nosy out there, forced to use his own self-healing on that one. Not going to be enough. The Baptiste it vulnerability rose, but... field by OQ really providing a lot of value. We do have the the Baptiste, Bas, excuse me, the Arissa shield up front isn't going to last long, but so far defense, the Falcons have really, really pushed back the members of this attack. Spartans and nosy being forced to switch on over to Hanzo now. Uh, yeah, that's rough. If you're not able to get onto the point quite early, you kind of do have to swap yeah. immediately, but now how do you deal with the defensive Bastion? Who's going to be doing to you what you wanted to do to him? Although, yeah, I guess their answer. There you go. And now Glacier is here with the res. The uh, concussive blast used a second ago by Desi, so not able to knock this Mercy off point. So that getting super low on this one as both Baptiste ultimates do come out. Desi now showing a little bit of life as the Siren gets a headshot of his own. Super low are members of. Spartans, but they're pushing on, fighting through it. Yeah, see so many direct shots. They are opening up a huge amount of space for his team to move in and cap that. Yeah, just like that. That's a Spartans team that win that and find flashy and formative formation. Really, literally like a quick cleanup on that one. Right. Not, not a bad hold for the first point. They're probably going to lose it here without contesting it. I, They might get aggressive, but no, maybe so. looking like they're going to... Oh, they are... Here comes Glacier with the Mercy ult off the top as Desi continues to get it going. Send you back to spawn. We'll see you later, Zoom. Goldfish taking a headshot of his own. The Snipers getting us what we wanted on this one. And Mercy doing a great job of staying on top of them. The death from above not going to last too long. No lives taken as Nosy takes a nasty headshot of top. Shark, Shark being the one that set, shut down that barrage from above. Rez did come through for the Orissa on this one. And that's just zoom left. Yeah, he's going to get on out of dodge while the getting is good. If they keep going at this pace, they might be able to to take a win. But the second point is significantly harder to cap than the first. Indeed, especially with the you know, amount of changes and whatnot now. The the Widowmaker Goldfish, uh, he's really, really going to have to find good positioning on this one given how much the payload changes motions, you know? Doesn't really go of course. straight for very much. But with the amount of work Desi's been doing on this Farah, uh, I'm wondering if that Widow is just a direct counter and he doesn't care about the rest of the team. And there we see it, Desi going down. It is. Speaking of Chalup here, that's why I get a good color commentator, ladies and gentlemen. Nosy here with a lot of damage as well and just going to completely negate whatever progress they had with the Farah pick. Goldfish with a nice headshot on that one to open it up, but nothing doing afterwards. This offense just pushing on through here. They're going to get rewarded with another minute and a half if the Falcons can't get there. That's a lot of space moving into this point, and we see Goldfish deciding to opt right off the Widow after that, and back on the... Schnark did switch on over to the Roadhog a little while ago, and we'll see how that 
changes things if they do. Pulled pork combination being available for them now. Here's the worked well the last time. But... It really did, and here's the window up front. OQ trying to set things up for his team. Zoom getting shot through that against Nosy, and those direct rocket shots going to make quick work of anybody on the other side once you put them through a Baptiste window. Looks like members of the Spartans really just trying to fight to get this one through the first little choke. Now they're all through winning the, the shield battle so far. They're going to need to start using these ultimates if they want to win this fight. There's the our siren here. listening to our color commentators, <laughs> indeed. That the invulnerability field falling just as soon as members of the Falcons run around point. That's, put in some oh my too. goodness. Nosy taken out by his counterpart in that one, and but just a second too late because did get the dragons off. OQ sends you back to spawn, and this bloodbath on point continues on. Payload just seeing a whole lot of deaths, a whole lot of action here. It's this continued shots by Zoom. Spartan's not willing to get this one up quite yet. There you the go. Never ending no team fight. Finally over with a decent offense there. They've got some time advantage if they can roll in and win this next point. They might be going into the, the second half of this map with an advantage. Still have yeah, alts available. They have far alts available. They've, they could win this fight right here. Four ultimates there. And like you said, window out. But this is the possibility for the Spartans to end. Not just end, but end with, end with more time. Here comes Nevermore's damage booster. That supercharger doing its, its own part. Desi just looking for a good position on this as the dragons do come out both sides. Desi no more though. The res gonna have to come on to Zoom is the one with the advantage. And just like that, no time advantage for the side of the Spartans. They got three minutes left, but the possibility of them getting more time than the Falcons is now gone. No time advantage left for them, but still the potential to capture this point. They, the the defense there from the Falcons did commit quite a few ultimates there. They, they dropped out the, both the Hanzo and the Farah, so no damage ults available to defend here. They might just mm -hmm. get burned down. Uh, Sigma is still holding his ult. If he can find a couple people in that, it would open a great window for Farah to drop hers as well. There's a supercharger. Snark gets this whole hog off. That could spell death, doom, and destruction for the Spartans, but Nosy down first. Both supercharger and vulnerability shield for either side, being no more. Send with a fantastic res on there, as has been his niche so far. Here comes the whole hog. Snark almost taking out multiple members of the Spartans, but not gonna happen. Here comes the barrage, and that's taken out a two-piece on that one. A zoom does drop his counterpart. Orange Juice getting aggressive, and there's the Spartans now winning that team fight. Looks like they be pushing it in here. Three on top. They're about 10 meters away. Dragons over the side, and that might seal the deal for them. Goldfish on the tracer, not able to get out there as the Hammond does join, trying to spin to win on this one and continue out this stall. That's the zoom up top as Shark takes down Nosy. Nosy not able to really live through a lot of these team fights and the spin comes through. Value all day from Stivek as he has purchased time for his team. Less than one meter to go as the Falcons look like they're stabling Bishop. It does look that way. Stivek coming in at the last possible second to stall out on Hammond. And it looks like they've properly repelled and no ultimates available right now for the offense. It might be very difficult to get in here with a minute and 15 seconds on the yeah, and uh, I can tell you Zoom has gotten this fantastic position to take out multiple members early in a team fight with a barrage before. We'll see if he gets that one done again as we see a switch singe back onto this uh, Moira. No more. Well, yeah, they yeah they switched off the ferret. No more uh, no more of that. So one ultimate on the board. Just saying. Let's see how Orange Juice goes with the Sigma ultimate here in a second. Sivek really being the. Game winner so far, if they are held all the way through. Zoom that... looking for an opening to alt here. He finds it. There it is! And Osiren pulling out that invulnerability shield beforehand makes it so that Barrage finds its target. Just Singe and Orange Juice left on this one. Sanos, Orange Juice does have that Sigma ultimate. Uh, that really is going to be the name of the game in this last one. The Supercharger uh, will be there as well by Nevermore. How they do it, though, is really going to be... Setting factor. It's a long road to this card. If they've only got a couple seconds left here, 15 on the clock, they're going to need Desi to move in and start stalling for them pretty soon. Ooh, we got a little, got a little sneaky, a little sneaky, sneaky. There's the minefield that might black off the path. That's only five seconds to go. Nobody's going to be able to get there in time. Desi is their big choice, but no, go. Nobody touches. And just like that, the Ludlow Falcons are your EGF 2019 Fall Overwatch 
finalist winners. They'll be getting themselves $1,000 scholarship money from our sponsors. That's the Yukon Engineering School. Also, shout out to the Yukon uh, Gaming Club for setting up and making possible this absolutely electrifying competition, Bishop. Yeah, it was a, a pretty quick four games, Look but that, we, we did see a lot of great play from both teams. And a pretty decent offense Third, there oh on the God. last point on Junkertown. But 84% 84 participation. kill participation. If players are not voting for that, it just means they're salty. Seriously, Orange Juice, <laughs> fantastic job on that. Man, we were talking about Nevermore consistently, more. but that was a pop-off if there ever was one. 80 so, what, what, 84 percent i think it's done yeah 84 that that is that is a sigma very significant especially for a sigma who's spending a lot of his time just trying to keep his buddies alive you know not necessarily going for yeah wow uh, a lot of good play on the offense there from from amity unfortunately not able to to capture that last point but they they did get pretty yeah, uh, it really looked like they were going to be able to come through there. Now, the Falcons just blazing through point one and two, but finding a whole lot of flack, a whole lot of trouble trying to get to third point. Spartans kind of along the same line. You know, Falcons came in with six minutes on to, you know, after a second point, after, you know, opening up the the drawbridge there. And then the Spartans doing the same thing, which was five minutes, but a little bit, little bit of a different story. I think they got it down to like 0. 0.84 meters away, but... Yeah, it was so short, and, and that... I forget who it was. I forget which tank it was that swapped to Hammond. Savek. He came in in so close. Like, that was so, so close to being a cap for Amity. I mean, less than a meter. (laughs) And and staying alive, too, uh, on that point for so long with no support. Like, there Mm -hmm. there was a good few seconds before his mercy came in to heal him back up. Yeah, I mean, that, that 600, throw the shields on top from his abilities is going to buy him a little bit of time. But actually, now that I think about it, you really got to shout out the tracer that died there just a second ago, right? Because, you know, <laughs> 0. 0.84 meters away, what that means is that tracer stalled for enough time to let Stivak get there for the actual, you know, definitive high HP stall, you know? Without that tracer using every, uh, like, boost to get out there, every, you know, jump to get out there, then uh, I'm not sure that that would have been a Falcons team that had, you know, the space and time to get there to stall, right? Yeah, it's just such a close margin on there. Every single second, every additional player you have stalling counts for so much. Yeah, something you see on Junk Town pretty frequently. But uh, oh, yeah. with that, Bishop, I do believe we have reached my least favorite part of any cast, and that, of course, is the end. That's so sad. Yep. Oh, womp, womp, womp. This has been an awesome, uh, awesome finals. Love the Falcons 4 0 the Amity Spartans, even though that score shows a sweep some very 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 close games this would have ended a long time ago if the spartans were not playing very well uh, like they were really i'm fbi tugboat this is airship bishop who's been casting with me really appreciate that and down producers box was my boy navic producing away making our job just so much easier want to shout out the yukon school of engineering one of our sponsors in this yukon gaming club both two big awesome organizations that make this possible bishop you got anything else for me I think you covered pretty much everything, Tugpo. I think you did a great job. I think the players did a great job. I think our production did a great job. (laughs) Well, I think you did a great job as well, Bishop. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Tune in next time for a little bit more crazy EGF stuff. Won't be too, too long before it comes up. Appreciate you watching. See you guys later.